Uh, in our first agenda item, this is proclamations and presentations. Uh, here we have the uh, Upper Ringwood Mine Superfund Site uh, Community Advisory Group uh, discussing potential meetings at Borough Hall. Um, and that's, that's where we are. Um, and like I was just saying uh, a moment ago, I'll repeat uh, so I can pass, possibly find my train of thought again. Um, we have certain rules that are established at the library. It makes no sense not to have the, the same rules or even more stringent rules possibly at, at this location. You know, behind every one of these doors is private information of our residents uh, that has to be, you know, properly secured. Can't have just anybody walking around necessarily. Um, whether or not there'll be future attendance by municipal, you know, officials, um, I haven't been seeing... I haven't been seeing agendas. I don't even know when your next meeting is. Sometimes EPA lets us know, you know. Uh, so um, uh, I'm, I'm not quite, you know, it, I, it doesn't seem like there's a strong case here uh, and the, where the library is not serving the purposes that, uh, uh, that, the, that the CAG needs, at least, in, at least in my eyes right now. Um, is there any other, any other opinions on? Yeah, I do have another opinion. Uh, the CAG has set precedent by meeting here for many years. From what I understand, they met yes. here for 10 years. And to my knowledge, there has never been an incident that caused concern for the council. And I know that I've been attending uh, many of the CAG meetings recently. And I do see Mayor Spear and Scott Heck and the EPA and other officials who are disseminating very important information to our community in attendance. And if they're telling us that it is an issue for their members to get there, I think we should take them at their word that there has been a conflict with that 6 o'clock start time. I myself am starting to look for a start time for a club, and 6 o'clock is a little dicey for people. Sure. So given that, I think um, this is a good concern that we should give credence to based on pre past presidents and the community information they disseminate. I would, I would um, want to kind of chime in on that too where I kind of echo your concerns in terms of free-for-all is not a fair state for the borough to be in um, nor is it necessarily like a direction that we need to go. I don't, I don't necessarily feel that this is an appropriate community room. I don't know that you should be able to just book this space. That felt, um, I think it was December when it was kind of unveiled, that felt generous, but it also felt like maybe maybe we're going too far and we don't have to open it up for, for booking. Um, so rather than try to kind of boil the ocean and make this available for everyone, if we do identify specific scenarios like the CAG where it is like a viable use and there is a uh, you know, a reason for the space. There's an opportunity for volunteers once they, excuse me, once they go through the, the process of, of learning with Tracy to, to join that Ringwood TV function so that this could be recorded and broadcast for people who can't come out. Um, I think that that would be incredibly valuable and I don't think that um, we have to let it be a, a Pandora's box. Uh, in terms of like the, the hour concern, I certainly uh, can echo, it's, <laughs> I'd have to leave work early. Uh, to get out of the city in order to make a six o'clock start time for, for anything or uh, you know work from home. But uh, further to that, I don't know CAG bylaws or what the process would be, but if it would be a matter of like officially having somebody from the council come back to the CAG, maybe that could be one of the steps <coughs> that they could take so that there's a designation so that you've got somebody uh, accountable for, for the key. and. I don't know if it could be loose enough that there's an alternate so that, I don't know, if you can't go, somebody else could go, something like that, so there's accountability. I'm openly inviting any one of you to join the CAG. There's just the mayor and the council. And I also want to say this. The library and the borough hall are two, there is two different cases there because uh, the town kind of holds our life in their hands right now, and they are a PRP. So I feel that, you know, that is a good enough reason to have meetings here because, uh, you know, I mean, the library didn't do any of the dumping or do anything, and it's up in the town's trying to put in a new recycling center, so, you know, the cleanup doesn't have to happen. And so I feel they definitely have a big, they're, they're, you know, they're uh, really involved big time in it. Can I say that even if the town wasn't a PRP, 
You have a, we have a Superfund site in our town. The council should care about that. So the council should participate because there's a Superfund in our town. So whether you are PRP or not, somebody that represents the town should be coming down to see what's going on, whether you're as a member or a member of the audience like the DEP and the EPA and all of the other people that are concerned who come and sit and share information with us, you should either be on that side of the aisle or you should be on this side of the aisle. But somebody from the town should be present for the group that deals with the Superfund site that's in our town. You know, in my the, opinion. The, the, um, okay. It was like the June CAG meeting of, of 2017, I think. This was the one that was held up at uh, the Ryerson. NYU facility up there. Okay. Um, it was a circus. Uh, there was press releases beforehand. There was um, a documentary film crew that came through. Uh, there was press releases um, immediately after. I think the uh, I think a member of the CAG put out a press release um, stating that they wanted to have a hearing in front of the uh, the New Jersey State Legislature's Joint Committee on on Drinking Water Safety. Um, so it was just a whole bunch of bad publicity with absolutely, they, there was, that's right, it was an emergency seep sampling, right, where, where members of the CAG went out, trespassed out on, on, onto, onto state or borough land, took samples of water, um, and said there was an emergency seep sampling. They got that all filmed for the documentary film crew, real nice, um, and then didn't share the data, didn't tell us what actually it was. Now, I know. I know, because I've been to like a lot of CAG meetings. I've been to, you know, you've seen me a lot. Yes, I know I that if that, if that seep sample came in bad, I know that I would get to read that in the Bergen record. And, I, and then well, all I would of a sudden, hope so. nobody wants to hand us any information. We don't have any that so, was, that you, was Bob Spiegel. Right. We don't have any of that. That should Bob be understood Spiegel's, that Edison Bob Wetlands Spiegel's, did that. They are no longer yes. a member of the CAG. We ha don't have any of the information from them. We don't have it. They didn't give it to us. We were unhappy with the way that they spoke I was, to other people. I was hoping, no I, was, I was hoping that the, 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 the state legislature joint committee would have a hearing on it. I really was. You know, that, that so hearing went by, I want to say it was the first Monday in January. Not a word about Ringwood. Not a word. How come? And how come there's a press release saying that they should bring this in front of, this, the, in front of the joint committee of the, of the state legislature and then no follow-up? You know what it was about? It was just about casting the borough in a bad light. That's kind of my, my I will opinion. always That's cast the borough in a bad light right about now, all right? I've lived here all my I life. Baby, and yeah. I've lived it, and I've, my, everybody up there has been through hell for my 66 years up there. So, you, you know, you haven't been there all your life. You no, haven't I dealt haven't. with everything. Mm -mm. No, so this is how I feel, you know? I feel it here, you know? I've lived it, and uh, it just hasn't gotten better. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, um, I mean... Oh, man, I, I could take this whole meeting for hours and talk about the things I've lived in life and what's happened up there in Upper Ringwood mm -hmm. and many of things, you know, that's been done to the residents that shouldn't have been done. Hopefully someday I'm going to present that to you. Well, I'm going to try like listen. hell. I'm going to try listen. like hell. Um, I also think that Mr. I just want to reiterate what Robin said. <clears throat> Bob Spiegel, Edison Wetlands, presented all of that information at NYU that night. We had no idea what he was doing. It has never been seen the light of day after that meeting. We have nothing to do with it. We have distanced ourselves from that and also distanced ourselves from the letters that Judy Sullivan have written. With the, with the racial profiling accusations exactly. against our police department. Which the exactly. CAD, which the CAD um, never saw. We that. never saw we never any saw of those any of letters before. before they went out. <laughs> which is part of why there's now. Says, oh, I do. Okay. Which is part of why there's now a reform CAC because information was going out that the rest of the members were not privy to until we had your response. We didn't know any of that had gone out. And the mission statement of the CAG is to disseminate information to the public and to work on real-time solutions for the Superfund site. That's the mission statement. The bylaws we can send you. I'm sure you've seen them because you have been a member of the CAG before. And I can tell you at all the meetings through the years, there's always a representative from the borough, either on the CAG or in the audience. You are a responsible party. This is a community advisory group 
for the borough of Ringwood about the most important issue facing Ringwood, a Superfund site. Contamination, contaminated aquifer at the Superfund site. These are important issues. And for you to find every excuse in the book not to allow the CAG to meet here after 12 years just doesn't hold water, excuse the pun. So I, I, I really don't understand what's going on. I mean, I checked your calendar, and you never have meetings um, on Thursdays. So we requested that we could, could we meet here either the first or the second Thursday of every month of the year, because all last year there were no meetings here. And your meetings, I'm going to tell you, are pretty skimpy. There's nothing going on here. And if we meet here, it opens up more availability at the library for community groups. So I hope you reconsider. I think it's important for the community. And yes, there are a couple of people who want to join the um, cable TV committee to learn how to video. I think the, video, the meeting should be videoed. Uh, as with the last election, it's a huge issue, the biggest issue. I know you don't think it is, but a lot of other people do. So I hope you reconsider. This is, we pay tax dollars. We are community members. We should meet here. The EPA is here. The DEP is here at all the CAG meetings. Ford is here. You're here. Wanda's here at all the meetings. They're all at the Kent Library, too. This is a better venue for the people that live in Upper Ringwood. It's easier to come to. <coughs> I don't want to get into the reason why we moved it. It's a personal reason between the, ma the manager and the chief. And uh, one of the reasons um, you Mr. feel like chief maybe Man. the CAG sort of fell apart is because, and I'm going to be honest with you here, is when we found out that the borough was going to stop the excavation of the O'Connor landfill, we were like, okay, what happened? The EPA recommended full excavation. The borough said no. So we were in a state of flux, but we reorganized immediately when the 1,4 dioxane was found in 2015. Mm -hmm. And okay. We We've got strong members, and I hope you reconsider. Okay. It wasn't much Thank of a surprise, you. right? You do recognize, we, and we can do this, we, and, and we have. But, <laughs> right, it was May of 2012 when the borough came out and said, there doesn't seem to be any reason for a full excavation here, right? I mean, it was, it was not a surprise, all right? The surprise was, the surprise What's was the actually, was at the, it was actually the EPA saying, uh, we're going to leave the contamination at Peter's mind. We're going to leave it at Cannon mine, but we want it all taken out at O'Connor. That was the surprise. That Are was because that's, about that's in the mines. Leave the contamination in the mines. He said Peter's mine, Cannon yeah. mine. Left the Peter's. There's 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 three land areas. I understand. Okay. But yes. Are you talking about leaving I'm the talking contamination about in the mines or on top of the mines? Um, where the capping is going um, to. Occur. I'm talking about there's capping at two sites, and they wanted to and they wanted to remove. At O'Connor, the same materials. But there, there was that was the never... surprise. There was no, there was no scientific basis for them to make that decision. That was a surprise because they generally make their decisions based on science. The surprise was that you want to go. This, yeah, <laughs> but, but I don't want to turn this into a CAG. I'm sorry, say, but you know the perfect, <laughs> okay. the perfect time to discuss all of this would be at a CAG meeting. Yeah, I don't want to. Hopefully, you know. right here. Because okay. that's the only reason we're here tonight. We're not here to, to relitigate or argue about anything. We do that at CAG meetings. We'd like to have our CAG meetings I know. here. I know. That's our request. Yeah, we, that's, we don't need to go back and forth because we can do that at CAG That's kind meetings. of what we're asking because, we I mean, you know, we don't want to bring up subjects about private meetings or anything because we weren't there when you had meetings with Ford Motor Company. And we are. The, I feel I am the primary person. I should have been there, you know, in front of Ford and whoever when you uh, took your trips to Michigan or wherever and had meetings with the EPA. Huh. Where, where are the people that are dying and living with this present? Where were they? They weren't invited, right, to any of these private meetings. No, they weren't. But you know what? I'm going to yes. step down. I'm going to be nice and let this Thank be a council meeting. 
you know, and I do my homework, and you do yours, mm -hmm. all right? Very good. So you take care. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor? I don't know if you have other counsel. If I could, uh, as a lot of you know, I have four young kids. This is a subject I'm very interested in, and uh, I've tried to attend the meetings with my kids, as many of you have witnessed. It's not an easy thing <laughs> for myself to deal with or the other people at the meeting. I would love to see it on TV. Uh, I'd love to see it repeated throughout the month like the council meetings are, whether as often or not is another story. But uh, I would also be able to attend, as would I'm sure a lot of other parents in town, if it were an hour or two later than 6 o'clock. Uh, I don't think, like Ryan said, we should necessarily open this room up to uh, to every club in town. But I do feel like that's, that's borough business, the CAG meeting, and that it justifies the use of this room. That's my opinion on it. Uh, if we were to, for example, use a school room and have it televised, I'd be just as happy. But I think, uh, I think it is justified to help them have their meetings at a later time and for it to be televised. It's one of the hottest topics and least, it's one of the hottest topics among the parents in town that I talk to, and they seem to be least informed about it. They're always asking me, and it's, it's not something you could just kind of like quick give a, you know, a playground briefing on. If they could, on their own time, see the, those meetings on YouTube, God forbid, that would be great, for example. Did you want to say something, Mr. Huck? I, I have a suggestion. Uh, okay. I, well, I got a comment, though. Oh, too. I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> CAC hasn't met here in over two years. This is not a community room, okay? Uh, my belief is if you do for one, you do for another. So uh, if you open up for the CAC, than any other group in town that wants to hold the meetings there, you got to do the same thing. You can't just let one group come in and then say, ch say the Chamber of Commerce wants to come in and meet here. Say uh, whatever group wants to come in here. You can't just say, oh, we're only allowing one group in here. That's not fair. And you know, while uh, council people uh, do attend, it's uh, an assumption uh, being made that they're the ones that can uh, open up and hang around to closing. Uh, that's not necessarily true. So um, my belief is that, um, and I expressed it to Scott, uh, this, this is not set up as a community room, okay? There's all sorts of uh, liabilities involved. And, but my biggest point is uh, if you offer it up to one group, then you have to allow any other group to come in, and that can't be possible. We can't, we can't uh, book this as a, uh, as a rental. I would just like to know what's changed between when the CAG used to be able to hold its meetings here to now that would make it prohibitive for us to do so. Just what I said. Because, but, it, but that was the case. It was the case that they were well, they meeting stopped, for over they a actually decade. Stopped so that's meeting. not a change. They, that's just a they different. They stopped meeting for a couple of years. So, okay. Year. So now that it's being talked about, and it's being talked about on TV, you get other people asking, well, can we use the uh, chamber, uh, council chambers? Okay. I get asked that. Uh, so what it's done is now uh, become an issue because now people saying, hey, we can use the council chambers. Are they, have there been other requests yes. to use the council chambers in a similar way? Oh, yes. For a similar organization of community importence? This is this is not public discussion, really. Well, it's public discussion to me. That's actually um, what in, we requested. In this section of the in this section of the agenda? I don't we're care. Allowing for it. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's public discussion. I don't know what's wrong with you or any of you that feel this way, all right? This is a whole different matter than the Chamber of Commerce. As I said, we are borough residents. The borough should look out for Upper Ringwood as well as Erskine, Skyline, and all the other areas. We are residents of Ringwood. So I don't know, usually just, what, what you are talking to me are really jokes. I just, I just don't get it. I really don't. Because, you know, <laughs> oh, man. I'm, so you know what? All right. If you decide not to. Then get your PR people on the line because we'll have the press. We'll have to have them at every meeting. And yeah. again, I will say and I will quote and unquote anything that I know and live and will have to say. And that's the way you feel about us. Throw us in the corner like we've always been. It hasn't gotten no better. Never. 
maybe in the near future it can get better. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm just, I just find this a big joke. I don't just. Just uh, Mayor, may, may I? There, there have been a couple things that have changed. Um, when the CAG decided to leave, um, I they, can't hear you. When the, when, the, when the CAG moved to the library, uh, for whatever reasons they moved to the library, um, the library has requirements for the, for the, uh, for the meetings and, and what you have to do. You have to pay fees. You have to book it. You have to have organizations. I'm sorry. I don't know that I can get this mic any closer. <clears throat> so, so one of the things that did change was that the CAG originally came to us and said, can you cover the insurance at the library? Um, and they requested that I go to the insurance company, and I think you requested that I go to the insurance company and ask, and the insurance company says if it's not within your control, you cannot provide insurance to that organization. You, you just can't do that. And so that's one of the things that changed. Um, what I did last month was I, or December, yeah, last month, I provided uh, a similar um, structure as the library that works for the CAG now to the council for their consideration. But it brings up several other things. It, and, and I do attend most of the meetings. I don't attend to all of them. Sometimes I've missed them. I occasionally go on vacation. But the difference between the library and here is that the library is open. It's a facility that's, that's open until 9 o'clock at night. This facility isn't open at night until 9 o'clock at night. So somebody has to be here. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, you know, the council members can come and go from here, but I'm responsible for the data that's in this building. I'm responsible for the security of everyone's personal information, tax stuff, finance office. That stuff has to has to be secure. Now, it can be. As a matter of fact, I've already started the process to change some of the doors so that we can allow for a different type of lock so that we can open and close uh, things and lock things remotely, secure things remotely. Um, that's just the fact of life. Um, so I suggest that as a compromise for right now to help the CAG because their main concern is the hours of operation. Why don't we talk to the library about extending the hours on that night for right now until we can work through these other uh, uh, obstacles that we have that we probably can figure out, but maybe not in the short term, so that their uh, meeting in um, February, whenever that is, February 8th, we can, we can you know, Daryl, we're, we're altering his hours a little bit anyway. Daryl's our DPW guy that's the custodian there. Maybe we can extend it till 10 o'clock and they can move their hours so that it's later so that they can accommodate the residents. Um, so I, I think that's probably a good solution for right now. I would have to check with the library to see if we would allow that. But Daryl is our employee. He's not a library employee. So we could, I'm sure, we, I'm sure we could do that. And that would satisfy the immediate needs. And then we can work on a solution for the, for the remainder of the, of the, of the uh, of the building um, I will tell you that the chief is very s concerned generally speaking not even about this issue about the security of the building and there we're, we're putting in things in general because you have to worry about in today's day and age you know you can roam free this whole building you know if someone goes to the bathroom you can roam free whether it's the CAG whether it's the Girl Scouts whether whatever the case may be so we're, we're working on some of those things putting some things in place um, for every day for during life while Borough Hall employees are here let's face it we're in a different world today as well as in the evening so that would be my suggestion. Why don't we try to get the library to stay open a little later that night? That way you guys can start later and it would alleviate the, the hours of concern. And, uh, you know, Mr. Klimek sent me a list of things to get back to him on relative to the use of this facility, which I'm in the process of doing. Um, so that's my suggestion. Agreeable? Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I, I just want to ask you this. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I know that West Milford has a bus where, where people don't have transportation. You know, they ride their, their residents around, and I know other towns do. Is there any possibility that Ringwood could do something like that? Because right now, I had to catch a ride, all right? And catching a ride down here is bad enough. Most of the people don't have cars, can't afford cars, to get to the library. So is there a possibility that Ringwood could set up some kind of transportation with these buses that they have out here or something? Well, the buses aren't ours. They're the Board of Education's. I mean, I, I, mean, I could ask Not if that's the, what All right. The, well, that little white uh, OEM van, whatever it is, bus, or that can't be used or for transportation or anything? No, that, that's a police command post that can't be used for, for that type of thing. So. And, I, and I do want to tell you this. I'm used to being followed around in stores because I get stereotyped for that. I would never, ever walk in this town hall. I will speak for me. 
and try to be looking at people's tax oh, of papers course not. or of any course. of that stuff. Or, I mean, I, Vivian, listen, of course that's not the case, but, but, but there's a lot of people that come to these things, and, and in today's day and age, you don't know who's going to come. You don't know who's going to walk no, through I that don't. door. And, as I said, and we, I have to, we have to ensure that everything's secured, and it's just the way it is in today's day and age. I mean, there's a lot of— you know what I should have done the other day? I should have got the mailman fired. The mailman? Yes. He left two, put two people's mail in my box from Skyline Lakes Drive and Erskine whatever from Social Security, you know, for, you know, the amount of funds that they get for the year for tax-wise and whatever. Right, right. Couldn't I have opened them? No. I took them over and put them in the of course, mailbox. Of course. You know, that could have felt, oh, let me see how much their income was, you know. I, I just want to make sure that you understand that it's not the CAG that I'm concerned about security. It's everybody, and, and it's during the day as well. I mean, we have to worry about the security of the building, and, and there's no barriers here. You know, when you go to the school, when anybody, the rec department uses the school, uh, the, the school system requires us to have security guards there. That's just a requirement. Um, now, I don't Good, think we I need like to that. have that type of thing. I like but that. I, if you have a zoning board meeting or a planning board meeting, you have the same thing. You have people in the audience. You don't know who those people are. I agree. I agree. So what's the difference? That's why we're putting, we're going back to the panic alarms that, for all the boards. There's one right here right now that, that we're <laughs> cool. going to refix. And, but look. The, so then but, we would have that too. But Ms. Kennedy, listen, there's a, there's a borough employee here that will close and secure the building. So, but just not for us. Uh, well, <laughs> there's not a borough employee that, that's here all the time. I'm not always here for the CAG. I try to make everyone, but I'm not always here. I appreciate here. that because I've seen you and I've seen you. I appreciate yeah, we that. Try okay? to, we try to get there. And I'm not suggesting that we can't do it. What I'm saying is for this next immediate meeting, this is a viable solution and to extend the time so that you guys can. All right. You know. So this borough employee, does, does, does this borough employee volunteer to unlock and open up? <clears throat> At the library? No, here, when you said you have a borough employee sometimes, you know, that will open up and... Yeah, usually the secretary of the boards will... will secretary of the boards are employees. Oh, that's right. I forget. You run the whole town, don't you? All right, well, some I of it. I forgot that. Not I the whole town, some that. of it. Yeah, How yeah. it works. Yeah. So... Mm. Because I didn't know the library found it, fell on, you know... I didn't well, the library is a <laughs> private association. The custodian works for us. The cu custodian that works at the library, it's the only place he works, is a DPW employee. And it's a borough um, building. Can it's I a borough building, yes. Oh. Also, uh, if we agree to this, well, we have no choice because you're making the decision. I mean, right, I think yeah. we should take it to a vote. Um, uh, you know, you're making an executive de decision on what to do with the rooms the taxpayers pay for. I'm making a suggestion to the council. <laughs> yeah, right. But anyway, if, in fact, uh, you are going to extend the hours in February, um, could Tracy come and video the meeting, please? Well, I don't know that Tracy could, but anybody who we, any videotape can be submitted to I understand, be played. But so why we need someone from the borough for the cable TV to video the meeting at the library, and then when we're meeting here, it'll be much easier. I've 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 been taped by hundreds of iPhones over the years. Uh, you, I, you, I don't you have guys one. Got all kinds of tape Tracy, on this. Can I stop? Tracy said it's a very specific format that's not the same kind of a thing that you can just throw up on YouTube, because we had talked about that a while ago. It's whatever it is. It's not like an MP4, or it's not your normal video format in order to go on Channel 77. So if somebody can tell us how to do that with a phone or a camera, we'll figure it out. But she seemed to indicate that it was something much more specific. I'll dig into that subject further. I'll figure and, it out. And, right. we can, and if we can do it at the library, could you let us know sooner rather than later so that we do know that we can bump the meeting to later so that we can go later? I certainly can call tomorrow and yeah. make sure that... Because we do have people coming from the EPA and they're not all local. So we would need to at least reach out to people and let them know that. Yes, sir. We're on this 45 minutes. Okay. We've got public session and uh, it's set to go. Very good. We will move on to the next uh, next agenda item, which is the approval of minutes. Need a motion. Kelly, you awake? I'm here. Okay. Need motion to approve the December 19, 2017 business meeting and executive session. Councilman Davison was absent. I'll move it. Sorry, I know we're trying to move on, and I didn't open my mouth fast enough, but I just wanted to ask a couple of clarifying points. So in terms of, like, the insurance for using the building, the, the CAG is not requesting borough insurance, right? So that's that's not a concern with They, the they have something at the library already. The CAG did present insurance uh, for the library. I yeah. presume you still have that? Yeah, that's uh, The uh, mm -hmm. Sierra okay. Club. Uh, okay. okay. And then 
we can follow up with them in terms of the process by which somebody essentially becomes like Tracy to, to use the room because there is that rec uh, not rec sorry the Ringwood TV Commission and a couple of people had submitted citizen leadership forms <coughs> to do that so can we I'm not sure who would reach out I don't have any we don't have any I haven't gotten any of for cable there TV, was, TV. Uh, oh sorry so there's there's one uh, there were people who were interested Joanne Garcia or Joan Garcia Joan Garcia who, Joan Garcia mm -hmm. yes, oh okay very helpful that you're actually oh, here. Thank you. Not crazy. It was on her her list, and you're right. We do have to. It's on her it. list. Remember, okay. uh, Marianne. I'm going to fail on the last name, but just so that we can know. Well, we're actually, looking for cable TV people to uh, break Tracy. Okay, so let's. She doesn't have to be here every single meeting. Okay, so one of the main reasons we're looking for people is so we can alternate. So. Right. She doesn't have to be here. It's not just for uh, videotaping other other things, okay? And and they <coughs> should go into a, a full rotation of, of whatever the need is, but I think that would then help cover the CAG without it actually being a burden on Tracy. So I think they would become part of the, the pool. Um, in terms of the, the doors and the security, so I know that the doors project is kind of ongoing. It's probably going to be another month two months is there I, I, it's all been ordered I just don't know when it's coming okay. in but um, and then in terms of like the the Board of Ed and the security guard so they have to have a security guard there and somebody obviously pays for that would it be an option to have a security guard here sort of standing between the bathroom and the rest of the borough so that it's really just this room that's accessible and have that invoiced to the CAG to cover with grants or, or, or what have you. I don't I don't even know what the cost would be, but would that be another alternative? We, we certainly could talk about that discussion budget wise, you know. Um, so I'm not remember, looking for the for the borough to pay for it, but just if they could fund the security to facilitate the use of the room. We've had cops at the meeting when we're here. They're there. Right. You know. yeah, yeah, that's true. And, but the but the it, police are here yeah, and they, they leave if there's scenes right. and there's you know that like Did there's they follow you to the school too? Pardon me? When they was all at the school when we had a meeting at Ryerson. Did they follow, what do you mean did they follow us to school? When you're having a big crowd, the chief always recommends when you're having a controversial crowd and you're going to have 150 or 200 people there, he, he usually sends an officer. That's, right. that's what he does. So. All right. So. And we, we're spending almost an hour on this topic. Can I, we move on? Fully, fully agree. I had one more question, um, which now, of course, is going to go right out of my head. Um, Oh, in terms of the schedule. So things are a little less rigid in terms of calendars when they're trying to get, like I've seen the CAG meetings move because like a technical advisor could be there or they're gonna change it based on a presentation. Could we, when we revisit this, look at having the availability in the calendar of either a borough employee or a council person who can let them out be part of that? So I don't know, maybe nobody could make the eighth, but you know somebody could do the 10th and that person would be committed to being the opening and the closing person and therefore the 10th would then work in that instance without necessarily saying any Thursday that the, that the place is free, you can, you can use it and consider that as like a condition of use. One of the other things that we have to also keep in mind is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays are pretty booked here. Um, you're talking about a couple different committees that you're, that you're uh, gonna be uh, uh, forming. Um, the last two Thursdays we had meetings here, committee meetings here. So there's there's other things that are that are going to be booked. We'd have to look at that calendar and see. I would suggest that that we try to help them out this month at the library and then try to find a way to to make it make it all work. Um, I don't know that I'm comfortable putting the responsibility on on uh, on council members to lock, secure, alarm, do that kind of stuff. But we could talk about all that. We can talk about all the. Uh, there's there's a lot of pros and cons to it, and there's a lot of things. I would encourage you that if you're going to do it to be consistent um, with whatever you're going to do so that we don't end up with controversy uh, down the road. If we're going to create a policy, let's create one that works and, and we'll stand the test of time. So that's my suggestion. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. On to the approval of minutes. <laughs> I made a motion. You made a motion on the uh, meeting minutes of December 19th. That was Martucci. Correct. Second. Second Noonan. <coughs> Um, yes. Can I, can I ask counsel, would you prefer if we abstain from? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Ferretti? Abstain. Davison? Yes. 
Um, oh, I'm sorry. Did I do that wrong? I'm sorry. Go back to the top of the page. I have it right in front of me. Uh, Councilman Bolton. Abstain. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Deputy Mayor Martucci. Yes. Council Members Noonan. Yes. O'Keefe. Abstain. Mayor Spear. Yes. Okay. I need a motion to approve the January 1st, 2018 reorganization meeting. All, more, uh, that's all were present. All were present. <coughs> I didn't hear. Second. I'm sorry. Who? I don't know. Motion Thank you. Martucci. Roll call, please. Okay. Council Member Bolton. Yes. Davison. Yes. Ferretti. Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci. Yes. Council Members Noonan. Yes. O'Keefe. Yes. Spear. Yes. Mayor Spear. Sorry. Quite right. This one's a little tricky. She's going to have to get to know all <laughs> the voices because she's I'm looking kidding. down when I know. you're speaking. And, yeah. I say we change it up mid-year. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, next order of business, general public comment. Um, anybody wishing to address the mayor and council? Uh, please do so. This is the... Uh, the brief section of uh, the <laughs> comment, uh, the direct and to the point, the clear and concise, Mr. Conway will show us how it's done. <laughs> Seen this stack? Tom, Thomas Conway, 19 West Circle. Um, first, um, at Environmental Commission, I want to thank uh, some members of the council to bring in the gypsy moth uh, question to our meeting. And it really was a pleasure to research it. I worked with a small team. And um, we, we enjoyed weighing in on the environmental issue, and I hope this council will bring any other environmental matters that come before it to us. Uh, feel free to email uh, our chairperson or our secretary. She'll send it out to the group, and it'll give us a chance to get well-versed on the subject. Um, but I am here to talk about the gypsy moth um, threat and the options to spray. Would you like me to hand these out first? Oh, sure. yes, sir, if you would. Thanks, Tom. It's cutting into your three minutes, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Please time it. He had a special note ahead of class. Thank Is this you. the same stuff you emailed me, Tom? No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. So as identified in the uh, egg mass survey, there was also an aerial study done. Uh, we're under threat of gypsy moths. Um, the, the, the threat, the letter only covers private land, which is very tough in Ringwood to control something just on private land. I hope the Department of Agriculture or DEP, depending on where those other areas are, will also spray those areas if we consider it. Spraying our private land is no good. It's like cleaning a part of the pool. It's, it's just not going to work with this. Um, the gypsy moths, the way they work, little eggs, actually a big egg sac, about a thousand of them, a couple thousand, they crawl up the tree, they get to the top, they can fly off there, given a little web, and go on to other trees. They eat all the leaves, and they can completely defoliate trees. Uh, we're talking about bare trees, the middle of June, just sun beating down on you. Um, those trees will regrow their leaves, but it will put them under stress. You combine that with a drought or something else, we could lose those trees permanently. If they're hungry enough, which I really doubt they are because we don't, haven't had a big outbreak in a while, they can eat uh, uh, conifers, or the uh, pine trees, and then that's it. They're, they're, they really have a tough chance coming back. Um, so what are the options that we're looking at? We're looking at something called BTK. It's a bacteria. It's a bacteria that works best in an alkaline stomach, not in an acid stomach. You and I can eat it. The bacteria will die in our stomach. A gypsy moth eats it. The bacteria goes crazy, reproduces, fills up their stomach, and they die. Um, very safe for humans. You can spray it on organic stuff. The part that worries me is we're not spraying it into organic stuff that we're going to eat. We're putting it into a fine mist that we're going to drop from an airplane on neighborhoods. There really aren't too many studies done, none that I could find, that are done on BTK in an aerial application in your lungs. It's a very small bacteria. When you spray, you want to get a certain size droplet so that it adheres to things. But when you're spraying, you can get down to the individual bacteria level, and when you inhale, that can go deep within your lungs. Um, so people with asthma, any type of lung condition, should take precautions. The precaution is to go indoors. That works for about four hours. After five hours, you now have a higher concentration of BTK in your home than you do outside of it. So there's really no safe place to go during this study um, or during this application, but there's also no hard science that says it's harmful to you. So there's no science that says it's safe on the inhalation method, and there's also nothing to say it causes harms. There's a lot of anecdotal evidence. There's evidence from um, Northeast US, from Canada, as well as New Zealand. 
And what they've come to the conclusion of, as many government agencies when they're applying pesticides, is that it's all in people's heads. The itchiness, the sore throats they get is all just because they knew there was an application. I disagree with that. I, if there's a New Zealand study that I did include in the folder I sent out to the council that uh, also um, doesn't agree with that. The timing application is important. If we just throw this stuff up there and it rains, we've lost our investment, completely lost our investment. They're also only proposing one application. That's 75% success rate. That leaves 25% of the population. You do two applications, you're going to get 99%. Uh, one application to me doesn't make sense. And uh, outside of New Jersey, a lot of other people recommend two. Uh, there is a benefit. You will get rid of 75% of that population. Uh, if there is a risk, and I don't know, we know for sure that there is, it will also uh, help minimize the damage up in the trees. But there is the cost, it's 76000 possibly 38000 reimbursed. Um, I never take a guarantee from the government until I have cash in hand. <laughs> um, there's also, it, it says that it's very target specific to cal caterpillars, that's true. Butterflies also go through a caterpillar phase. Nematodes can be affected as well as beetles with their um, stomachs. The inactive ingredients may contain food proteins, such as found in grain, which may cause sensitivity in people with intolerances or autoimmune dis, uh, diseases. I'd like to see us uh, going forward do a little bit more study on it, track the moths through the year. A forest can handle one defoliation without much of an issue. It can actually handle a second one, and it'll be under severe stress. And then on the third one is when you're talking about trees dying. A drought would complicate that. So if we had a huge outbreak this year, and combined with a very extensive drought, we could lose some trees. But again, we're talking about private property, not all of our forest land or anything else. And there's a lot of steps I could talk about that homeowners can take. You can put little bands around trees. You could simply duct tape a tree, put a little organic glue that you can find at a pest store around the outside of it, and that'll catch all the caterpillars going up your tree. Now, I mentioned they travel from tree to tree, but they don't necessarily just stay up in the canopy. They'll come down at night, they'll seek shelter, and then go back up. So even if you put this wrap around a tree where the bugs came from the sky, they'll go back down eventually and get caught in that tar. Uh, so there's a lot of things individual homeowners can do that won't uh, cost too much. There's also a treatment I prefer to BTK. I'm not a big fan of spraying bacteria over people's homes. And that's a pheromone. Um, the males get attracted to a pheromone. And we can just spray the whole area with that. It's not a, a, a biological agent. It's just a pheromone. That'll confuse the males. They won't be able to mate, and that's another way. We also have to remember nature. This is not a new virus. It's been around since 1869 in the U.S., 1920 in New Jersey. Nature adapts to things. I mean, if you clear out the canopy, you're going to then get brush and things growing down below. When you get brush down below, it's easier for mice and little rodents to live. And what do they eat? They're going to eat these gypsy moths. Um, if the population gets up to a, a size, the, uh, there's a, a nucleopolyhedrosis virus that will go, then attack them. But you need that critical, critical mass of gypsy moths. So in a big outbreak, nature actually will come in with some weapons. There's also a fungus, a fungus that's been around for about 100 years. For some reason, it disappeared that. We brought it from Japan, 1920s, 1910s. But in the late 1980s, this fungus came back and on a wet spring. It's going to attack the gypsy moth. So we do have nature on our side. Uh, there's a couple questions I, I, I listed out there. I'm just curious who requested the survey. Uh, do they mention the other parts of our town? A lot of our town is state public land. Are they going to spray that as well? I know the, the New Jersey DEP does have their own biological agents they'll re release in the forest to do that. Uh, I think it would be a mistake to call it a public nuisance at this point. We're, we're just going off of a threat, not an actual deforestation. The people I talked to in Stonetown um, did not indicate any gypsy moth problem last year. I lived through this in the 80s in my neighborhood, and I remember. You know it, because in the middle of June, you're getting a sunburn in the woods. Um, Sounds like rain. It's <laughs> you just hear it all. Yeah, yeah, the, the droppings. The droppings. Yeah, yeah. No one wants to go into out into a poop rain, um, and so we, we just want to know about this the spraying stuff like that. Uh, people, the notification on the impending spray isn't that good. They they give you a twelve hour notice. They give you one hour where they won't spray, and then the rest of the day they might. So if if you are sensitive stuff, you really need to leave for pretty much the whole day. Uh, lastly, it would be nice to know if individual homeowners could opt out of this. I didn't have time today to print this and include it in your packet, but I have um, the last 11-year aerial survey history of the gypsy moth problem. 2015 was our last outbreak with 290,000 acres statewide covered. This year in, New Jer in uh, Ringwood Borough, it's only the second time they've really had any type of heavy numbers in our survey, and it's at 1735. So we're not at a, at a critical level right now. We're not at the beginning of a huge outbreak. I say we let it go another year. If we see some damage this, this summer, if we see the trees uh, go bare, 
then we got to take action. We can do that with pheromones late in the summer when the moths are there, or we could wait to next, next year, and that would justify a real BTK application. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? I, I um, can answer two questions quick if you want. Sure. Uh, this, the state contacts us. I think they contact Kelly actually every yeah. year to see if we want to have a survey. Okay. So they, they contact us uh, all the time. And <coughs> I lived through the last spring that we did. I'm surprised um, because the, the resident, you'd be surprised at how many people do not want their land sprayed. And, and part of the cost is having to put markers out there and, and who accidentally got sprayed and who didn't get sprayed was, uh, was challenging. Um, I ask what year? I don't remember what year. I was here, so um, mm -hmm. I, I don't remember what year it was. Remember. But okay. uh, but I do remember the experience, and it was not easy. Uh, mm -hmm. Neighbors next to each other didn't want to get sprayed, and when you're spraying aerially, it's a little it's a little <laughs> difficult. But um, so we we talked to them the other day, Kelly and I, and we we told them that we probably were not participating in the program based upon um, some of the uh, the costs and so forth, and and some of the input we've had from the council members. Um, but we were going to put it on our website after tonight to see what the council actually decided to do, and um, and, and have him come back. Okay, and the Environmental Commission is more than willing to help uh, educate homeowners Great. and work with them to, to educate them and protect their property. Great. Terrific. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I will say since you mentioned uh, putting stuff up on the website, uh, the Environmental Commission had gotten uh, us in touch with uh, somebody at Rutgers who passed along a lot of helpful links for homeowners in terms of what to do, things that they can look at. Okay. So I can pass <coughs> along so we can have like a little... Sure. Yeah, we'll put a packet of info for homeowners on what they can do. I think we have the map up. Yeah. Currently, yeah, so. Uh, good evening, David Wunsch, 16 Jewelry Drive, Ringwood, New Jersey. I'd like to uh, welcome the three new council persons to the board. Uh, as a uh, going into my 18th year at Ringwood, a lifelong Republican, I love to see the democratic process here at work in Ringwood, and I wish you all the luck in uh, you know getting this town in the direction that it needs to be going in. I, I want to address the security guards at recreational uh, functions at the Ryerson School. It's uh, creating a financial strain for the Ringwood Skyhawks basketball program. And and I don't want to be here right now. I'd love to be coaching. But you know why I'm not coaching my daughter in sixth grade basketball right now? We don't have the money to pay for these guards. Um, some of the incumbents that ran, ran on the fact that we were rated as one of the safest towns. I'd like to know what's going on in this town that we need all these guards. I'm, I'm getting kind of nervous. You know, I mean, is, has ISIL put a threat on Ringwood? You know, is Al Qaeda uh, t thinking of taking out Ryerson? I mean, no, I, you know, I, I, you know, and you know, and also the PC term for gypsy moth is nomadic moth, by the way. So, you know, we, I think we need to go with that one too. But that's on a different thing. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm kind of confused here. Now, I understand. Now, you said something, and and I'll tell you what, Mr. Dwyer contradicted you. He said this was a cooperative agreement between the mayor and council. And that's why I'm here, not the Recreation Commission and the board. He said this yesterday. I I've been doing, since I couldn't practice yesterday, and I couldn't practice today, I'm here, okay? You know who's paying the price for this? My daughter's sitting home on her dumb phone watching television when she could be playing the sport that she loves, okay? I play, we play in the Bergen County Travel Basketball League. There's eight teams in my division. Uh, at the league meeting, I, I polled all eight teams. Which team needs the security? Ringwood. I was at Riverdale High School on Sunday. No security guards, no police officers, as far as the eye could see. We practice at Lakeland High School. Okay, Lakeland High School is nice enough to give us practice time. Uh, but unfortunately, the practice times, which rightfully so, come after their events. So sometimes my, my daughter's not getting home until after 10 o'clock at night, sometimes 10, 15, 10, 30, because yeah, I wait for all the parents to pick up the kids, okay? Now, I understand at a game, if, if Dumont's coming up here to play the game, and you said, if there's 150 people, I can understand, I'm asking for a compromise. Can the coaches who are certified through Rutgers, who goes through fingerprinting, who go through all the background checks, and we do it, with no problem whatsoever. I, I like the fact that we do it. Can we just require, and I, Mr. Dwyer said he would sit down and talk to me about this too, because obviously there's, there's two boards involved with this. Can we just do it that the security guard is at the games? Okay, yeah, because there's a lot of people going out. At the average practice, there are maybe 20 kids and four to five coaches. That's a five to one ratio. 
four to one if you have five coaches, okay? We do a good job of walking the kids in and out. I mean, you know, I, I would love you to meet my team. I have 10 of the nicest, loveliest girls around. They represent this town fantastic. Everywhere I go, I, the people say the same thing. Your kids are well-behaved, okay? Sometimes too well-behaved because they don't, you know, they don't get feisty under the boards. <laughs> but you know what, though? That's the, I'd rather have that, okay? They're not punks. The kids in this town are good kids, Okay, I you know I, you know I send my daughter to Ryerson every day, and I know that you know she's not being harassed, she's not being bullied, she's in a very welcoming thing. I I, I just I, I would like to practice more here in Ringwood. Okay, I mean I don't live far from Lakeland. Okay, it, it, it's not I'm not talking about you know and, and and you know I'm not talking about it's an economic trend. I'm just saying that the Skyhawks can no longer afford to do this. We pay two hundred dollars per year to do this. Okay, and if we want more practices, that is going to go. Up. And that goes on the parents. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Can I ask you a few questions? Yes. Um, first of all, it's a Board of Education policy. It's not ours. Okay. We, well, I'm just saying, I'm telling you what so he told me. He said it was a cooperative. Uh, Obviously, you're cooperating with them. We're, okay. we're cooperating in that they're asking us to pay for half of it, and yes. they're paying for half of okay. it. But uh, no, this is a Board of Education policy, and, and it's something that, that it's challenging to get a security guard there, and we have to schedule them, and who's showing up when, and it, it's challenging. So, uh, But that's their requirement, and if we want to use their facilities, that's what we do. Now, Skyhawks, is that a rec program? Skyhawks is a travel program signed up through the community pass. I don't know. I, I, you know so it doesn't actually come out of your account. That, that comes out of the rec budget for security guards, right? What I was told, and this was when I asked the, the person who runs Skyhawks, what I was told is that uh, out of our $200 that we pay, per, the money comes to pay out of that. Yeah, I don't, think that's, I don't think that's accurate. I think the security guards are paid out of the rec budget from our portion, and then the school pays their portion. But, I mean, you're getting money from us, though, towards Skyhawks. No, all the money that goes into the pro sports program stays in a trust fund for the sports programs. What is so dangerous, though, about this town that we need security? Oh, that, that I can't can I, answer. Can I listen, ask you a question? Can I, can I give you an example? Yesterday, I went to Mr. the Board Watson, of Education. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you again, that's not our policy, that's yeah. the school's I, policy. I know, but can we all get together and, 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 and you know, I, I, again, Mr. Dwyer, I sent him an email today. I want I wanna open up a dialogue. Yeah, you know, first of all, you know, the guard is very well, uh, he, he's very well versed in community, uh, in, in um, current events because he reads the newspaper. <laughs> Secondly, he's very well fed because some of the food he brings is fantastic, okay? It smells good wherever he's ordering it from, okay? Thirdly, I walked into Hewitt yesterday, okay, to go to the meeting, okay, and I wasn't even asked why I was there, okay? There was uh, some sort of practice going on in the small gym at Hewitt. I walked in, turned to the left, walked into school, went up there. I wasn't even questioned as to what, and I didn't have Skyhawks on. I didn't have anything else on. I was just, you know, dressed as a, as a regular citizen, okay? Um, at, at, the, at the events at Ryerson, he sits by the front door, okay? If my malicious, vandalistic children want to go up and run upstairs behind that gym in Ryerson, they can take off in that school and run amok, okay? But they don't do it. You know why they don't? Because it's their school and they respect their school. Okay, they're not there to trash it. You know, I mean, I understand here you've got HIPAA laws, you've got everything else here, you've got tax things and things like that, and there's some and there's 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 confidential stuff at the schools. And I'm not, and I'm saying that if we're bringing in other towns and there's crowds and there's a potential for you know one crowd to get out of hand because of a bad call, things like that, that that you know at least let the guard walk in the gym and say, hey, you, you know, you're, you're out of line. And our fan, the, the fans of the other towns. Are they're great. They're great. They cheer when they're supposed to cheer. They, you know, uh, we cheer when we're supposed to be a cheer. I, you know, I've never seen in, in the years that my daughter's done Skyhawks any altercations between the two. This the refs do a good job of, of, of controlling the game. It's just, it's just not fair. Okay, whether it's coming out of the recreation budget, whether it's coming out of the budget that we pay towards it, it just doesn't make any sense. The compromise is simple. I agree. If it's going to be a crowd. You, you need someone there, okay? Uh, the other thing, too, is the guy yesterday was dressed, you know, I, I don't know if there's a requirement as to what's there. Some of them look very official. Okay, when you walk in, hey, that's a security guard. The guy yesterday had shorts on. Well, I, I don't know who was there yesterday, but I can tell you that more often than not, they're special police. Yeah, I don't, no, I said, yeah, no, I'm telling you. I, I, I'm, I, I agree with you 100%. That, that that they you, they do look official, and they come in and they come in, in official-looking vehicles and things like that. Some come in there, but but the thing is, the guy yesterday was not dressed in anything that, that you know, he was sitting in. The only reason why I know because I've seen him at the Ryerson School. You know, that's it, you know, but, uh, you know, I've seen him as a, as a guard because there's a, there's a rotating group. They're not, it's not always the same person every time, obviously, schedules and whatever else. But the thing is, though, and, and I'm hoping 
thing, Mr. Dwyer, opens this up. Obviously, it's not going to happen this year. We're halfway through our season. But you know what, though? The, yeah, recreation, is in, in, recreation is very strong. I, I coach lacrosse. The lacrosse numbers are over 100 girls in lacrosse. The Skyhawks numbers, we just added a third and fourth grade team. But we can't add more teams. I had to wait till fifth grade to get my daughter team because you know there's no the space. space yeah. But there's no more middle school basketball. Okay, so that gym is open. It's sitting there right now. It's sitting there. There could be a third grade team. There could be an eighth grade team. There could be any team doing anything else other than sitting here. I want to coach. I don't want my daughter on her dumb phone. I don't want her watching TV. Okay, you know, and I know that, you know, uh, you know, what they say, idle hands is the devil's workshop. Very simple. Okay, we, we live within a stone's throw of the biggest heroin mill in the world, okay? The best heroin in the country is made in Patterson, okay? If these kids aren't doing something productive with their lives, they're gonna be scoring heroin in Patterson, okay? I have a nephew, he's in rehab, okay? S same thing happened in his town. They cut, they cut, they cut, okay? I sit there and I pray for that young man every night. He's 21 years old and he's been bitten by that bug, okay? And again, I don't mind that I'm on cable TV because I'm a walking advertisement. I pray for him every day, but you know what though? If he had something more in his life, that's not, I don't want that for my daughter. I know well, no, you, none of you want that well, for we, your kids we or, expanded, or your grandkids. We have expanded or, all of our programs. So, but I will certainly talk to the school board about their policy again um, because it's expensive, but, but it's also what they require. So in order for us to get the gym, this is what they require, so that's what we do. We can certainly revisit it um, with them, but uh, my, my suggestion is they're yeah. probably going to have the same opinion. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think Mr. Dwyer yesterday was open-minded, I have to say. So I think he's going to open up a dialogue. I hope so. Uh, and, and, I, and I appreciate the fact that you're listening to this. Yeah, yeah. anywhere we can help, we'll, we'll yeah. try to we'll Yeah, try yeah, to yeah. We, <laughs> we, we love rec programs. Yeah, I'm we not – yeah. playing. It's when he told – the funny – I, as I said, when he told me that it was a cooperative, I said it, it sounded more – I didn't want to say it in front of him because he was opening himself up to a dialogue. I knew it was like, this is it you know, sign it or else. You know what I mean? I had a feeling it was this, and you've explained this to me before too. I just, it, he told me to come to the meeting tonight, and since I didn't have any practice, you know, since there is no basketball practice, one day a week at Ryerson, you know, and I said, I, and again, I got to come in, Lakeland. I, I came here tonight, and, and I knew I would be listened to, and I knew this was happening, but again, you know, it just, it, it, it's just, as I said before, we live in this community, we brag about its uh, low uh, crime rate, things like that, you know, and I just hope that we can all sit down. I would be more than willing to sit and, and, and explain to Mr. Dwyer what we have to do. If we could all get together, you know I'll meet with you anytime. I, I thank you for your time, and again, good luck to the new council people. Thank you so much. Robin Kennedy, 310 Lakeview Avenue. Um, long before our three new council people were council candidates, they were active in Ringwood Cares or supported Ringwood Cares um, and the movement for the petition for a referendum to do a full cleanup. The town, of course, sued. Uh, that was the end of that particular referendum. However, when they ran as candidates, uh, the Superfund site, the environment, was one, not only, but one of their issues. It was an important issue. Um, I think that it was one of the reasons that they're sitting here today instead of the three incumbents. They also ran on open and transparent government and listening to people. And so through the campaign, I was kind of listening to people too. And I think as Councilman Ferretti said before, people are still very interested in cleaning up our town. Um, and I think that their issue, that issue, their message resonated with people, and that is why you now have a mixed council <coughs> with three new members. And frankly, if four seats had been up, you would have four new members and we'd be having a whole entirely different conversation. But the conversation that I want you to think about now is, why don't we look at a referendum again? Only this time, you guys work together and write it so that you, Mr. Klimak, won't find issue with the language. You can write it clearly so that it says exactly what you want it to say. And why don't we put that referendum on the November ballot and ask the residents of Ringwood whether they want a full cleanup on the O'Connor disposal site or not. Now, you may think that that's not as popular as I think it is of an issue. Very easy way to find out. Put a referendum on the ballot in November let people vote. If you're right, they'll vote your way and you can continue with your new recycling center and not do a full cleanup. If I'm right, 
the majority of residents will come out and they'll tell you that they want a full cleanup and you get to listen to what the residents of Ringwood are saying to you. So you have a bipartisan opportunity to start from scratch, put a referendum on the November ballot, and let the townspeople decide whether or not they want a hundred and something thousand tons of toxic waste to remain in our community. You can make a face at me. I'm giving you a very easy solution. Ask the people in the town what they think. Because again, I think the we're listening to you message resonated with people in the community. And I think that's why your three incumbents lost and my friends won. I could be wrong. It could have been something totally different. You don't have to answer me. I'm just telling you to think about it. Think about doing a referendum. We don't need to debate it right now because there's a very easy way to figure it out. Let the people vote for it. Referendum, vote, people who live in town decide. It's the way democracy works. Try it. Thank you. That's arrogant. Hi, Vivian Milligan, 31 Peters Mine Room. You're going to be shocked at what I'm going to ask. I know the town of Ringwood turned, turns 100 years old this year. So I am just going to ask if you, you know, if you know the date, is there anything going to be planned for that? Any kind of, you know, special event? Um, we're going to be uh, appointing a committee of the council uh, to, to work on that this evening. Um, there is um, uh, February 23rd at Passaic County Community College in Wanakew. Uh, there's going to be the three towns, Bloomingdale, Wanakew, and Ringwood, having some kind of a joint celebration at that point. And, and the committee will be looking at doing other things throughout, throughout the course of the year. All right. Yeah. So, I yes, mean, we are paying attention. All right. That's Thank what you. I wanted to ask. Thanks. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Less than three minutes. <laughs> well done. Um, Ann Seebecker, 5 Fox Hill Lane. Um, regarding the, um, the uh, anniversary celebration, I wanted to inquire why we're not forming a committee with the residents. I've been bugging um, <laughs> Kelly for months now. Um, I actually volunteered to serve on the Wanakew Committee, um, and I keep saying every month I'm going to the Wanakew um, 100th anniversary celebration meetings, and I'm helping plan theirs, but there's nothing in our town. So I just wanted to suggest, in addition to the council, um, it doesn't all have to be done by the council or by poor Kelly. Um, there's residents who are willing and able to participate and help plan. I would be one since I'm helping plan the Wanakew celebration. So. Thank you. Sorry, but just backing her up, what she's saying, do I have to say my name again? Yeah. All right, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe we could look out for, maybe residents might have some like old photos, you know, vintage photos or something where we can try to incorporate this, you know, and do this for the town. That would so, be wonderful. You know, that would be, you know. That would be wonderful. And I think the, the council committee will be reaching out for well, all right, the, but the like public. You, said, you know, those residents of them, you yes, know, I'm kind of with her, you know, the residents that have been here a long time, you know, they might have things that council definitely I know, don't have. I know so. you have quite the archive. Well, um, I have some. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't raise your hand, we probably would have come a knocking. <laughs> all right. That's all right. Monday. This, 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 this. This, this area needs more community development, such as Passaic County and New Jersey farming. The historical society of Ringwood needs to be looked after in the farmland of New Jersey and Passaic County. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> Good evening, Steve Michelin, 29 Whaleback Terrace in beautiful Ringwood, New Jersey. I just want to make a comment first, and before I have my other say, uh, it's nice to have a mix on the council. The downside is that the council meetings tend to be a bit longer. <laughs> um, regarding Scott's, excuse me, Mr. Heck's suggestion That's for the funny. library, we're on, t we're on camera, it's Mr. Heck. <laughs> um, 
I don't know, just in case there are some people that are not aware uh, of their library that you are able to close the main section of the library, the meeting rooms downstairs and the lobby can remain open and you don't have access to the, to the, I have a group that meets and we occasionally go past nine o'clock so that there is precedent set that that's done. Uh, they're very kind to do that for us. Again, if someone's not familiar with our library, shame on you. <laughs> uh, we have to be up by nine, um, Something else I wanted to mention is there's always money discussed. Uh, I quite often read in the paper about uh, a town, not, not necessarily our town, but a town or a county employee that retires with, uh, I'll call it a, a golden parachute with vacation and built up uh, sick days and such. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe I recall in a past meeting that Mr. Heck mentioned that we did implement a policy for sick days that if they were not used, similar to working in a corporate environment, that they were, were you, you didn't get paid for them. The idea is, I, I could be wrong, but you, I, I'm under the understanding, just it's just sick days, that if you don't use them, you're not getting paid for them. Being healthy should be its own benefit, that they're not accumulated. They're capped at a certain point. Okay, capped. Um, and vacation days, similar things. The vacation days, I always felt, are meant for recharging, spending time with your family away from work, getting things done, what you need to do away from work. It seems that vacation days and sick days have turned into some sort of bankable retirement uh, package for people. I know that there are existing contracts, and I do recall the, there was a, was it a, uh, the governor, whether it was a law passed or an executive decree, I'm not sure, that with the cap at $15,000 per, per employee, but that was something not retroactive. It's only effective for new employees. So my concern is that this might affect the borough of Ringwood somehow. We have, I don't know, 40, 50 employees at the borough, $15,000, you're talking half a million dollars. Um, that is a liability, would be a liability if they're allowed to bank these sick days and vacation days. I um, would like to see next time that there's a contract negotiation that the borough think about mirroring what they do in the corporate world. That's where I work. You use the time or you lose it. Again, if you're sick, it's meant for being sick. Sick days are not meant to be a put towards retirement pay. Same thing with vacation. You use it or you lose it. It's part of your compensation, yes, but the idea is you should have people cross-trained. There can't be one person that valuable that they can't take vacation time. That's actually not a good thing, I'm sure you understand. So just the idea is that we have a liability out there when there's a contract negotiation, and I do know that, and I thank you, Deputy Mayor Martucci, you've frequently pointed out that the Board of Ed and the county are the bulk of our taxes. Thank you for doing that. But if the council is brave enough to incorporate something like this, we can use it as an example and then go to the other organizations and say, look, here, precedent has been set. Thank you very much. Um, I think you're going to consider sustainable Jersey today. Uh, while I'm all for green things, environmental stuff, I just want to make sure we're going into this with our eyes wide open. Um, it was created by Chris Christie as a cover. He created this because he was pulling out of the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. So he wanted to tout his sustainability. So we brought in Walmart and PSE&G, New Jersey Natural Gas. So right as we're pulling out of this Regional Gas Initiative, which we're, by the way, going back into, he created this with corporate funds. Uh, the board and trustees have energy professionals, municipal professionals on them, lawyers. They seem to lack many people with a good environmental resume, except those from the New Jersey Audubon Society, as our friends at Weiss know. Um, I'm sorry, Ms. Monahan, I know you are a director of that organization as well. Um, almost 1.2 million every year. What they, they have 1.2 million on their books as income from the College of New Jersey, and it goes right back to them. It's, it's a little odd to me to see that in a, in a corporation, like, in a nonprofit like this, one that only issues about 700,000 in grants. Where's this 1.2 million in-kind services going? 
Is it going to the certification um, programs? Who knows? Uh, Randall Solomon, who is one of their biggest, um, who works at, 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 at uh, Sustainable, he also works at the College of New Jersey. So th that gifts and kinds worries me. One of the first things they did was the hazard mitigation funds to handle Superstorm Sandy. It was shady. It was behind the scenes. It was a Chris Christie classic Sandy move where he gave his friends the money, and he did it through this vehicle, Sustainable Jersey. Uh, Richard Dovey is the president. He's also on the Atlantic County Utilities Authority. He makes 150000 a year. They, this organization pays out 800000 a year in salaries. They claim one employee. That employee, I, I don't know where the money goes. It goes to directors. I'm not sure if directors are paid, but there's about 17 people can go to. If you do the math, it's about 50000 a year. On their tax form, it says those people put in one hour of work a week. Sign me up. Um, on sustainability, Governor Christie, uh, this is what Bill Wolf, Wolf said. Bill Wolf is one of my favorite guys. He runs Peer. He, it's public employees keeping an eye on government. And he goes, on sustainability, Governor Chris Christie is an emperor with no clothes, and sustainable Jersey is not even a plausible fig leaf. Uh, while cities receiving these corporate-backed grants do not have to take a loyalty oath to Walmart and other sponsors, these are big corporate sponsors, it is poor politics to bite the hand that feeds you. I couldn't agree with them more. Again, in their last fiscal year, and before it is even worse, they, they put out less than 500000 in grants, but they're taking in $1.6 in income. I would never donate to a charity that has these expenses, that's coming in with $2.6 in income and only giving out 700000 in grants. That leaves $1.9 out there for their in-kind services and other things. I'm all for green teams. I think we have a lot of initiatives in Ringwood. I, I, Ringwood Cares has been dormant since the... Um, except for the election, when I know they posted on that. They've been dormant since then. We have a lot of environmental groups within town, the CAG too, that aren't well attended. I think adding another environmental group could put stresses on that or just put some of them out of existence altogether. Uh, I'm not for or against this green team. I have enough environmental responsibilities myself. I just want to make sure we go into it with our eyes wide open. Thank you. Thank you. Second. Uh, roll call and close the public, please. Council members Bolton? Yes. Davidson? <coughs> yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Um, okay, do we, anybody want to, anything we heard at, at public we want to respond to, or we should just move on with our agenda? Um, I would like to respond to Tom. I want to thank you for bringing that information and that background about sustainable Jersey to our attention. However, um, there is money available through sustainable Jersey through certification to back some of the green team initiatives that we want to start here in Ringwood. And I know that my friend who is the mayor of Bergenfield received $10,000 grant from sustainable Jersey to clean up the pond in Bergenfield which for the first time in a long time froze and they were had ice skating down there with the pollution previously it hadn't really frozen before so although maybe some of the things you say are true and i'm sure you did your research there are opportunities for the town and the community through the sustainable program and we want to take advantage of them so thank you do we want to comment on the assumptions made by Ms. mitchell um, we, we, as far as our public employees yeah, and, we, and the golden parachute, so to speak, we, we, I think we're in very good shape uh, yeah, relative we, to vis-a-vis -vis other towns. It's addressed in all of the, uh, all the actually contracts. our liabilities are, are listed out in the, in the, in the budget uh, sheets, but uh, we, we have them in all of our contracts. We have caps on sick and, and, and vacation time. Most of it, either they use it they, or they lose it, or there's some people who can't use it that we buy some of them out, but very few people, we encourage people to use their vacations. Sick time you know, is really for sick time, and you want to save enough of that in case you have a catastrophic event. You don't certainly, we have some people who are out for long-term illnesses and they don't have any vacation, uh, sick days left, and that's challenging for them. Uh, but we have, in our contracts, we're, we're well below what the state standard is in terms of what you can, uh, you can apply for at the end of your, they're capped how much you can get at the end of your retirement for uh, sick and whatever time that's accumulated. And we have people that uh, had two and 300 days worth of sick times that end up walking away with five or $6,000. So, so our contracts are, are well preserved in that regard. Okay. All right, moving on. Um, 
Next agenda item is old business. Uh, there is no old business. There is no new business. Um, I think at this time I can uh, uh, just get the council updated. Uh, our special environmental council, Wanda Monahan. We can let Mrs. Monahan go. If we just get you a quick update from uh, from Wanda here on on where things lie with the uh, with the Superfund site and. If you would, please. Sure. Thank you, Mary. And I'll be brief um, because we do keep, uh, of course, the borough uh, manager and the council informed about what's going on with the Ringwood Superfund site. Um, so I just have a, a very brief status update and really just sort of a projection for what uh, we expect is going to happen uh, in this calendar year uh, 2018. So relative to the operable unit two, which are the three land remedy uh, AOCs, uh, Ford Motor Company submitted a final uh, draft meal design for the three caps that are going on the three land areas of concern. Uh, they've been with EPA for a couple of months uh, and is being reviewed by EPA, so there's nothing further for Ford or for the borough to do until the EPA uh, finishes their review and either approves those designs or provides you know, further comments and questions and requests for additional information. Uh, I think that this was the third a round of submissions, so we're hoping that the approval will be forthcoming. I don't know how many uh, additional comments or questions uh, EPA could have because it's been, you know, this iterative process uh, with the agencies. Relative to uh, some of the permits that are required for the uh, implementation of these remedies, all of the uh, applications have been uh, submitted by uh, Ford and their consultants to the various agencies, including the uh, NJDEP. They are all also being uh, reviewed by those agencies and, you know, being processed, you know, through uh, each of those appropriate um, uh, agencies. Relative to Operable Unit 3, which is uh, the site-related groundwater at the site, uh, you know, there was uh, a supplemental remedial investigation report that was submitted, uh, again, by Ford and its consultants to the EPA. Um, the EPA did approve the site-related groundwater ecological assessment that was submitted by Ford. Um, there is a baseline human health risk assessment addendum that's been submitted and that is currently being uh, reviewed by EPA. And we understand also the task uh, contractor who's been retained uh, f to assist the CAG uh, is also reviewing uh, that document as well. Relative to that Wanakew Reservoir Modeling Report, uh, there was uh, an additional document that was submitted by Ford and their consultants relative to a supplementary transmissivity a report uh, that's been the subject of, I guess, a few technical conference calls between uh, the agencies and Ford's consultants. And uh, we're being told that um, the US EPA approval is pending uh, for that document. And so we're, uh, as the borough, also waiting to hear uh, what's going to happen there. The um, remedial investigation report addendum for the site-related groundwater was submitted, um, and we understand that the task contractor has provided a draft fact sheet that's being reviewed by the agency and um, will be, I believe, reporting about it at the February CAG meeting. And so, you know, we'll hear, I guess, then uh, what the task contractor uh, review uh, has to say about that. The candidate technologist memorandum, which um, sets forth the different uh, potential remedial alternatives for site-related groundwater was also submitted uh, to the EPA uh, in December of 2017, and it's, again, still under EPA review. So generally speaking, everything that um, was supposed to be done and submitted uh, has been uh, completed, and everything really is just within the agency's uh, review, either for, again, comments or for approval. Before you go on, I see a lot of people mm -hmm. taking notes. Would you be able to send that to me so that I can forward it to the council members? Sure, absolutely, yep. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yep. And then um, in terms of like the, the actual documents and the draft documents, are those allowed to be shared publicly or does that only come out from the EPA once it's final? Um, those are submitted by Ford's contractors in draft to the agencies. So it would really be between them in terms of whether or not they're made public. Um, I think that they would be made public because they've been submitted to the agencies. And I think they're considered draft until they're approved, and then they become the final document. The, the final documents are the ones that go on the EPA website, get that little barcode. Yeah. The draft stuff, you're never going to know what stage of draft it is. You're never going to know. Do you never, you're never going to be able to get a full chain of the comment letters and the response to comment letters that went with a revised report. 
So the draft reports are really, of uh, they add only confusion. You know, um, that's 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 the problem with with yeah with with printing out and taking a look at all these draft documents. You don't know what you have. You don't know what you have. You don't know what to, what the final agency determination is. And it's sometimes difficult to find things on the agency website. So as things get finalized, we'll we'll upload them onto our site so you have a link that goes to it. Because what sometimes you you get in the agency's website and it's there, and sometimes it's down, and some you, you're combing through page after page after page to try and find the, the document that you're referencing, and and so um, so that's what we'll do once they're right. at a point where we can we can publish them. Yeah. Oh, I know we're definitely good about having the finals up, and particularly having draft with I don't know which comment letter goes with it, and what does that actually mean for the document? That right. Was this comment ever sense. addressed? You know, how do you how do you know? You know, so. Um, so that's really my status update for now. And again, uh, the projection for 2018, I'm being told, is that uh, you know the remedial design for the land remedies, operable unit two, we're expecting the EPA will be approving those remedial designs, and that construction for these um, capping remedies will uh, begin presumably in 2018. And the process uh, to get to a record of decision for site-related groundwork for the OU3 um, is moving forward, and I know the agency is uh, pushing hard to put themselves in the position of being able to issue that record of decision in 2018 for site-related groundwater, and certainly the borough is hoping that will happen as well. For September, before that federal uh, cutoff, they're, they're in their... Was that the fiscal year? So? Yeah, uh, you know, we'll we'll see. They, they and were again, for it last year, right? they were certainly, and you know, part of the issue or challenge is that everything again's been submitted to EPA, so it's all sitting in EPA's hands, you know, and because of the flux of what's happening at that federal agency in terms of budget cuts and yeah. layoffs and so forth, I don't know if that's going to have any effect on their ability to review and turn these documents around. Um, we haven't heard anything. Uh, one way or the other about that. <coughs> All right, very good. If there's no other questions for Ms. Monahan. Mayor, what I, uh, what I suggested to you, and, and it was Ms. Monahan's suggestion that we have an executive session. She's, she's working on a, on a flow chart of liabilities and so forth, and we have an executive session with the full council um, scheduled so that, uh, you know, it's, there, there's the opportunity for the new council members to ask questions and, and a question and answer period about some of the uh, insurance related stuff and some of the liability stuff. And so that's what I suggest we do. And um, I don't know, maybe we can have Kelly pull um, the, the uh, council next week and find out when you might want to schedule something like that. Very good. I would schedule that as an isolated event. And yes, no, that, that should start at 7.30 and go <laughs> in and out of public and, and just go into executive session. Yeah, and, and, and also have uh, Ms. Dodge available if, in fact, or have a second one with Ms. Dodge so that everyone's on the same page and has the same information that everybody else has. That would be a good plan. Okay. okay. So look, look forward to that. We'll, we'll mm -hmm. get something done in February. With the February would be? That's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. All right, great. Okay. Thanks. Okay. You going to take all that stuff with you? I am. Okay. Kelly. Lovely surprise. Thanks for coming out tonight. Okay. Oh, stuff. Okay. Thanks. You're up. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, next on our agenda, uh, resolutions. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, resolution 2018-39. Whereas the chief financial officer has certified the funds are available for the payment okay. in the current bill listing in the amount of three hundred forty-eight thousand three hundred seven dollars and eighty-one cents, the supplemental payments in the amount of four million twenty-three thousand six hundred ninety-one dollars and eight cents for the listed account for a total of four million three hundred ninety-six thousand nine hundred twenty-three dollars and seventy-four cents, of which uh, two million one hundred nineteen thousand sixty-eight dollars goes to Ringwood Board of Education, and Lakeland one million one hundred twenty-three thousand two hundred forty-seven dollars. Do we have a motion? So moved. Okay. Second. And a second. Uh, Kelly, roll call, please. Council Members Bolton? Yes. Davidson? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. 2018-40 is the... Uh, okay, real quick. Oh, I'm sorry. He's looking at the bill list. Don't look at it. Okay. No, just... <laughs> The sentence called facil facility due solutions. So it's a computer program. Okay. 
<laughs> that manages our facilities, that, that manages the, the, the renting of fields, and, and it, that's what it's called. <laughs> Sorry. It's a Fortune 500 outfit. Yeah, it's, it's big time. Dude Ranch. Okay, uh, resolution 2018-40. Okay, the 2018 is the uh, municipal contract for the borough attorney for 2018. Um, I didn't know if there were any questions, but... Uh... I, do, I do have a couple. Um, so just in going through the, the retainer agreement, one of the things, or I guess there were two different areas. I'll start with the, with the easy one. Um, for section one, clarifying that uh, within section one includes the travel time to and from council meetings? No, no. It's, uh, it's not, not between council meetings. No. He doesn't charge for travel. Oh, oh it's only. Only to an outside it's event? It's only for outside of, uh, outside of, actually, in practice outside of per se county. Say county, okay. Yeah. And that, sorry, so that was my understanding. I wanted to make that sure. explicit mm -hmm. as being covered within the That's retainer practice, for one. Yes. No, it's not, uh, here, obviously. I kind of figured you didn't charge for that, but I just I'd pick them up on the way out. here if I, I, <laughs> if I thought that was a problem. <laughs> so whether or not we should detail that out there, um, and then in section three as well, that the portal, the portal travel would be uh, outside of Passaic County. Mm -hmm. And then the the larger one, um, or the larger question that I had was in, in section two. So. In the event that there's a conflict of interest, but it is something that ordinarily we would be receiving under the purposes of the retainer, so something from Section 1, if there's a conflict on your part, then the borough has to spend extra in order to secure counsel. Well, they, um, wouldn't, they wouldn't spend extra. They just wouldn't be paying me. Uh, they'd be paying somebody else. Because if it's outside the retainer, we'd be right. paying for it anyway. Yeah. Right. So if it's outside the retainer mm -hmm. costs... You're going to be paying Mr. Klimek, or you're going to be paying the other attorney. Either way, you're going to be paying. There'd be no extra fee at all. Uh, I just, as, as the, the banner said, I just uh, someone else would be getting the fee, not me. Okay, but if it's I not something that would have been covered under one. No, one, no. one, one no. is one is just uh, for, for for general counsel purposes. Yes, yeah, that would be uh, a different responsibility. But, but this is uh, for litigation purposes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Okay, and then that would be the same thing for section four. Section four is going to be everything that's outside of that first section. Correct. So, yeah. Yeah. perfect. Okay. That's it for me. <laughs> so, Mr. Mayor, uh, you have a you have a motion and a second. Uh, motion Martucci. Are you going to? I'm, I'm going to second that after all of my questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mr. Bolton seconds. Okay. Any other discussion? Take a roll call, please. Sure. Council members Bolton. Yes. Davison. Yes. Ferretti. Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci. Yes. Council members Noonan. Yes. O'Keefe. Yes. Spear. Yes. Mayor Spear. Sorry. Spear's fine. Uh, no. <laughs> can't do that. I'll get it. Okay. Resolution 2018-41. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> Um, and this is a uh, this is a resolution on, on the governor's council on alcoholism and uh, drug abuse. This is for the uh, the municipal alliance. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, resolution. I had I had to use their form, so I, I know, it's I, usually a title, but they didn't no have title, that this so, year. Yeah. So that th this is we we share these responsibilities every other year with Wanaku, and this is our year to to, uh, to take care of this. So, mm -hmm. um, Mayor, you don't need me to read this whole thing in, do you? No, 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 we don't. Uh, every, every year, the uh, Aware ASAP Alliance, or now Lakeland High School, is a, it's a joint uh, joint program between Ringwood and Wanaku. Last year, Wanaku ran it through their budget. This year, yeah. we're going to run it through our budget. Correct. It's pretty pretty straightforward. The number always stays right in there at forty four thousand dollars. It's the number, and um, this is just a you know every other year we get the same we get the same resolution at the same time of year. You're going to see some charges that go through our budget. Because this year we're writing all the checks, so yes, that makes sense. So um, the DEDR, what does that stand for? Uh, I, that's the that's the dedicated money. I don't know what the abbreviation yeah, that's is. Yeah, that's the state on the uh, drug enforcement. What is it? But that's that's the state part of the money. That yeah. yeah. This, this we don't. This isn't our funding. This is their funding. It's just administered through us this year. Next year it'll be administered through Wanaku. 
So this is all their funding and their resolution. It's just that we're going to be the ones that are managing it. Paying, all we do is pay their bills. Oh, and okay. then next year that account gets moved to Wanakew and then they pay the bills. So then the, the, catch, the, 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 the cash match and then the in-kind, that's not coming? It's not coming from us. Okay. Yeah. No. Fully support the drug stuff. I just wanted to understand. <laughs> no, I understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and they make it purposely opaque. That it's not that quite, you know. I, I read everywhere. I couldn't find that acronym. No. I well, if you, look at, <laughs> if you look at the second page, the alliance allocation, you can see that where the money's coming from. So. And the alliance name is the URA SAP. So um, I was a little thrilled because it had no title as well. So. Mm -hmm. What is it? It's, good. it's a great okay. program. Did we get a motion? I didn't. I will make the motion. Mr. Bolton? And I'll second it. Mr. Keith? Uh, no further discussion. We'll take a roll call, please. Council Members Bolton? Yes. Davidson? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Resolution 2018-42, this is the governing body certification of compliance with the United States Equal Employment Opportunity Commission's enforcement guidance on the uh, consideration of arrest and conviction records for employment decisions under uh, Civil Rights Act uh, 1964. Um, I'm the compliance officer. You appoint me every year, and we're in compliant with this. And um, I forwarded you the, uh, the links today so that you, so that you can look at them. Um, so this is just a certification that's done to uh, say that we're in compliance with that. And thank you for doing that. It was a, it was a good summary of all the rules. Okay, good. I'll move it. I'll second. Uh, roll call, please. Council members Bolton? Yes. Davidson? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Okay, moving along. Mrs. Hallowitz, consent agenda resolutions. Whereas the mayor and council of the borough of Ringwood has reviewed the consent agenda uh, consisting of various proposed resolutions. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the following resolutions on the consent agenda are hereby approved. 2018-43, approval of consent. 2018-44, approval of payroll and payroll transfers for December of 2017. 2018-45, approval of municipal liens various. 2018-46, authorized redemption tax sale certificate various. 2018-47, refund overpayment of prepaid property taxes, block 882, lot 11, in the amount of $5,000. 2018-48, authorized 2017 property tax reduction for disabled seniors and veterans, various. 2018-49, authorized refund park and ride for 46 Fountain Drive. 2018-50 is the approval of the borough holidays for 2018. 2018-51, authorized closing of Skyline Drive for the St. Patrick's Day Parade, which is Saturday, March 24th, 2018. 2018-52, authorized use of park and ride facility for the St. Patrick's Day Parade, Saturday, March 24th, 2018. 2018-53, certify the Ringwood Ambulance Corps as the emergency services provider for the borough of Ringwood. So moved. Mr. Moon? Second. Second, Mr. Martucci. Any discussion or anybody want to remove one of these for further discussion? Roll call, please. Mayor, uh, Council Members Bolton? Yes. Davidson? Yes, except I'm going to abstain on 51 and 52 since I'm on that committee. Okay, so then we, we should really pull them. Pull those yeah, let's pull, pull, I'm going to pull those. 52. Okay. Sure we got two members. Okay, so I was going to make a joke about removing it to give everyone a heart attack. But. Okay. <laughs> so, Torches okay, and so pitchforks, I would man. have been shot. By Torches myself. and pitchforks. <laughs> All right, so we're going to approve this agenda with the removal of 2018, 51, and 52. So our moved is amended. Okay, and second. Deputy. Oh. Yeah, I'm on a committee too. So. Oh. Okay. Okay. Let's start again. Council members Bolton. Yes. Davison. Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Martucci? Yes. Uh, Noonan? Yes. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Okay. So now let's go to 51. If we could. And let's probably do them both together. Yes. We can. 52. Yep. Right. Okay. I'd like to make the motion. And I'll second. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Sure. Council members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Abstain. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Abstain. Council members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you. OK. 
Okay. Next order of business. Manager's report. Um, thank you, Mayor. I have a couple things that I've uh, sent you guys today. Um, the library agreement, it's, it's an agreement that uh, uh, for the for the library to operate the library in our in our, in our municipality, um, something that Mr. Klimak had worked with the library on. It's very similar to the Mr. Klimak. It's very similar to the last one. Yes, and it's um, the one. It's been ba the basic agreement for 15 years, I think. Yeah. It, oh. So it's just a, it's just a uh, an operation agreement um, for them to continue for the library, and I think it's a three year term, if, I'm, if I remember. Do you remember, Mr. Klimak? Yeah, three, three year term, and it ends uh, December. 31st, uh, three years from now. So then year over year, are there any significant changes or, or edits of note? No, the, the one thing that, uh, that, was, that, that they recommended was which budgetary, and we can't bind future councils, so we took that section out. But other than that, it's pretty much a very similar uh, operating agreement that they've always had. So. So, so do we need a resolution ratifying? The I would prefer a resolution yes. ratifying the agreement, yes. Authorizing. Authorizing yes. execution. And the, uh, I think the board met last night, and they have already agreed to this themselves. That doesn't mean that you can't change it, but um, the, the board themselves have met. Okay, so we need a motion. Uh, uh, Authorizing execution of the agreement with the library board regarding uh, the operation of the library. I'll move. Mr. Martucci, move. I'll second. Ms. O'Keefe, any discussion? Roll call, please. Yeah, I, sorry. Oh, I had, sure thing. Because I was going through my notes, and I, I had thought that it was new, so I had a few, few things, like, caught my eye that kind of surprised me. So the way that certain items are treated, whether it is or is not the property of, like, borough citizens, kind of threw me, uh, confused me a little bit. So, for example, I want to say, um, like iPads and, and TVs and some of those items purchased by the association wind up remaining as like personal property with the association as opposed to some like items trust. some items that are purchased through the friends of the library um, are theirs but by and large just about everything is is owned by the library when we do our asset inventory the books and all that stuff that's that's all owned by the borough so th there are some incidental stuff that they do own but um, but there but there is a there is some personal owned property of the association. I guess an example, we did the purchase order for the, for the, for the laptops. Um, and there's very few things that they own that, that, that we don't. I, I'm not even sure that I could come up with a list of them, but uh, the stuff that they may, maybe the friends purchase a, some type of, um, you know. Yeah. And, Obviously, I love the library. Love the friends. I understand. Of the no, it, it, this All is upstanding citizens. It's just if there's a fundraiser to purchase something, then I think the mindset of the the donors would be that it's for the residents and it's going to stick with the library as opposed to the association. And I never really thought of them as separate, honestly, until going through the they, agreement. It, they they are separate. It. it and it's uh, this is one of the larger libraries that's run under this form as a uh, as a reading room. It's not a municipal library. It's a, it, it's a reading room. We provide the building. Uh, we, we maintain the building, but they operate the building as a private organization. So I guess if you're, you wouldn't know, your fundraiser would be for the library association. You would be donating to the library. You wouldn't recognize them as being not the borough. I can, I can see that as, you know, it, it, once, you, once you dig in a little bit deeper, though, it's, um, and it's their stuff. They fundraise for it. They want to improve the library services that they offer inside our building so it seems fair and you know it's definitely mo fair. Right. most of the items but have a shelf life they have a shelf life of you know yeah. they, the the things that they purchase may not last very long and you know so there's a shelf life on those type of items um but i got to tell you that uh, you know it's much like the fire departments they have some of their own property but at the end of the day if one of the fire departments were to to uh be uh, you know taken uh, taken out of service that stuff all is going to stay with the building same with the library the library is going to there's nothing there worthy of them really taking anyway so um, it's always been in the contract and I didn't see the need to alter it for for the few things that they purchase and I'm not looking to take their iPads yeah. <laughs> just trying to understand it yeah, yeah no this is yeah, business you, and you're allowed to ask them. these right yeah I know they're not them. ours it was just sort of no. to, to see the books in one column and then everything else in the other I thought I was like oh <laughs> As you're looking you at some pause. of these things, you're going to ask questions. That's business, and that's what you do, and that's, there's nothing wrong with asking those kind of questions. So it's, it's just mm -hmm. the course of business. So I clearly want the iPads in the trust for the Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
No, but they also have a significant line of our budget that, uh, to get money from. Yeah. Yes. Uh, That's why we encourage it to be used. Okay. That's right. That was the, earlier in the agreement. There was like the line item, but it doesn't yes. specify how much. So I guess the amount that comes from the borough will vary based on the, the budget. It varies based on the budget. Okay. I, the, but there's a form. Your, your municipal libraries require one third of a mill. They have a specified funding number. Um, and that you, you'll even see it on the bottom of your, your tax bill. I think you, that, that's a, or even in our budget. I think budget our budget, budget. Has, that, has that line item, which tells you what the number is that, that you must fund it if it is of a municipal library form of organization. Um, the thing about that is, in order to take advantage of those uh, cooperative lending agreements uh, between the, like the state County libraries and such, they want all libraries within that system to be funded at the same level. <clears throat> Makes sense because you don't want to have some free rider who's not funding their library getting access to all your books when you're actually putting in the third of the mill that you're required to do. So we always stay above that level. I think we're, we're quite a bit above that, that level now, but um, it's, it's worked out you know, quite, quite well. I have no problems with the, with the library, uh, except uh, when, when you put the budget line item on there, you, yeah, you choke, you, uh, yeah, you swallow hard. We, we can't bind future council's dollar amounts. That's why there's yes. no dollar amount in here. That makes sense. Makes good sense. Okay. So, Mary, you have a motion in a second, I think? I do. We had a motion in a second. Do we, we did. get to a roll call? We did We're going not. to a roll call, Mr. Bolton. Are you ready? Council members, yeah. Go. Bolton? <laughs> yes. Davison? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Spear and Mayor Spear? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I'll get it. It's going to take her. It's going to take me a while. I'm not hung up on the title, Kelly. I'm not hung up on the title. I am. Thank you. Okay. A um, couple more things, Mayor. Um, one of the things that we've talked about, I, I talked about it with council members. I've talked about it at open space meetings. I talked about it at a uh, rec commission meeting is uh, our turf field. Um, the turf field that uh, we designed and had hoped that we would be able to build, build at Hewitt School due to the environmental constraints, doesn't look like that's going to happen. The DEP hasn't said no, but they have made it very clear that there's so many obstacles there. Even though it's an existing field, um, they, that I don't think that's going to happen. So I spoke to uh, um, several of you, and I spoke to, uh, I went to the uh, Open Space Committee, and I also went to the Rec Commission and asked for a resolution to apply for a Passaic County grant, because we have grants right now. As of right now, we have... <coughs> We have grants. I have it here someplace in front of me. Um, right now, we have uh, grants from Passaic County Open Space in the amount of $457,500. We have open space funds in the amount of $800,000 and borough funds in the amount of $100,000 um, for a turf field to be put, what we were going to be put at, at Hewitt Field. Um, so that's $1,357,500. Um, we can't keep the grant for Passaic County in limbo forever, and they've been very good about extending it. They, they extended it again for us. Um, Kathleen Caron is really great to work with. And I think that uh, what, what I'd like to do is, is get authorization from this council to file for a grant um, for either Stonetown Ballfield as our first option or Lakeland as our sec second option and see if we can then, um, you can't transfer grants, but you can certainly apply for a grant and, and then they'll, in the grant application, it shows the monies that are outstanding with the understanding that, that those grants will go away and will almost be transferred, but not transferred. Um, so my recommendation is to, uh, to apply for one of those two facilities. The approval that I got from uh, both of the, or, the, or the recommendation from the other two boards is for Stonetown Ballfield being first with uh, uh, Lakeland being a second option. I don't know whether Lakeland is, is easily done uh, in terms of Passaic County monies, but um, you could still apply for um, Passaic County monies for Stonetown Ballfield regardless and improve that facility. Um, I think I've talked to you guys about uh, over the years about we, we need more than one anyway. Um, obviously, the cheaper way to go is to do it at Lakeland, provided that you have a contract for the hours of use for us um, so that we can have enough for our recreation. Um, so I don't know, Mayor, if... if uh, I guess if you want to ask any questions about is there anything that I can answer relative to the grants, it's the same grants that we've applied for for uh, 14, 15, and 16. Um, and uh, my, my recommendation is that we have a deadline on this. 
We have to have a public hearing by Kelly. The, by the week of the 19th, the February 19th, week, which February 19th. our council meeting actually is the 20th. So the timing is good and we'll advertise 10 days prior to the uh, appropriate. Uh, and prior to that, we have to do advertising for, uh, I think it's 200 feet around the property. So we have to do some of those things. So there's some mechanisms that we have to go through if in fact we're going to apply for the Passaic County grant. All right, just to make it clear though, uh, we told me uh, do the Highlands do it on a school property? Well, Stone Town Field is right. They don't say that you can only do it, but it, but school properties are exempt from the Highlands. And my basically, I don't think you'll ever get approval for a municipal okay. complex. Uh, the problem with doing it with Lakeland is uh, between the Rec Commission and um, Open Space, we're concerned with the ability to get our fair share of use. A fallback plan, but um, they have a lot of sports going on over there. And if we're going to do some sort of turf field uh, to ease the uh, problems that we're suffering, uh, I think the first choice would be Stone Town Field. Okay, the Lakeland is, I think, a dis distant second. <clears throat> I will say, um, I mean, I, I agree. I think it's a great shot in the arm, if you will, for, for the Stone Town, Town neighborhood. Um, let them see some investment and some improvement out there, particularly um, in that in that complex, which is which is beautiful. Um, I will say in terms of Lakeland, and I hadn't, obviously, like my son's too, I'm far from this perspective. Um, somebody had pointed out to me that it is the kids that are in high school that need the turf experience when they're going for the college teams, <coughs> which doesn't actually take away any of the complications of like space sharing at all. And I'm right. not moving to reverse it. I just needed to, to say that um, because that was a dot that I hadn't connected in, in my own brain. Um, in terms of going for the application, I had two questions. Is there any cost for us in terms of like the preparation? Like are we, how much do we have to spend in order to make the request? It's not a lot of money. The, probably the biggest is that Kelly and I usually do the yeah. grant. We, we, uh, we, we do the grant ourselves. Um, we appear before the, uh, before the body. We don't take a professionals or anybody with us. So, so no, we do have to spend money for certified mailings and for that kind of stuff. So you're talking, you know, $500 or less for, yeah, for, the, for the costs. But um, it's not like we have to do, like, the same sort of plan and, like, the no, you don't, for a human you don't have to have a just plan. Just to get the money. No. Okay. No. Uh, that's all included in the in the funding for the design and, and whatnot. I will tell you there's pros and cons to both. Um, I would love to see Stonetown facility uh, expanded and, and, and the turf field there, but there's parking issues and we parking is going to be somewhat problem for, uh, you know, for the highlands because they, you know, incre increasing impervious areas a problem. Um, and the other problem is the, the existing site plan um, that we have does not allow a resolution from the planning board does not allow for lights at night and you're not going to put a turf field anywhere where there's not lights so that would be something that you would have to talk to you know have hearings on for the residents and whatnot and and my guess is if you completely build the track and and do what you really need to do in stone town ball field you're probably talking two million or a little more to to accomplish that and it's a longer term uh solution like it's going to take you longer to get all that stuff accomplished than lakeland you have the opportunity to um the stands are there the parking's there the lights are there you know you'd have to build a bathroom because they don't want people coming in and out of the school um for the for the bathroom facility they don't have that now they have uh, they when they're there they have the school open but they're going to want an outside bathroom because again security issues and and uh, the tracks there and the grandstands are there so it, so the, the, the pros for, for Lakeland is it's going to be much less expensive. Um, but quicker to implement. And quicker to implement. Um, we would absolutely have to have a pretty iron, ironclad contract with our hours. Basically, they, they said we could have, you know, like 6 to 10 p.m. most of the day Saturday and all day Sunday. Uh, but it would have to be, you know, something that's a lease where we have this agreement. So but I think we can work through all that stuff. Um, so those are, the, those are the pros and the cons. I mean, one is probably in ringwood would be ideal um, but again i think down the road um you're gonna you're gonna probably have two 
anyway. Uh, we have our, pro, our sports programs are so uh, uh, well attended that, you know, you look at the soccer and the lacrosse programs and, and uh, the baseball programs, it's, it's incredible the numbers that they have. Um, we would have the fields striped, I'm using the wrong term because it's not really striped, but uh, for four different sports, I think uh, I think it was soccer, lacrosse, football, and um, maybe I forget football. what the other. One. Pardon me. Yeah, I was gonna say there might be like a girls' version of this. There's a girls' version, of, yeah, something. Okay. I think girls lacrosse and boys lacrosse might be different, but nice. so four four different sports. So that that's kind of where it's at. So I don't whatever your pleasure is, Mayor. I just need some type of resolution this evening, unfortunately. Two quick more questions. Yeah, keep calm. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so going for the grant doesn't commit us to proceed, right? So if no. I fell down at any point in time, we can send the money. Right. Okay. And then um, is there a mechanism by which over a multi-year process of grants we buy down the portion that, like, the borough would have to chip in? So, like, if the if the total's $2 million and we hopefully we get back to 5 maybe we get, like, another 5 Like, are we able to... <clears throat> Once, but, yeah. once you apply for the grant, um, like we had this, the grant that we have now from Passaic County is for four hundred fifty-seven thousand from the Passaic County Open Space Fund, right? I think that's three years too. It, it was, was fourteen, like fifteen, three, and sixteen. Three funding cycles. Okay, so we it went through Passaic County. Mm -hmm. We were trying to accrue that money from Passaic County, had right. it supplemented by the Open Space funds that 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 we collect, and also did a, a borough budget match right one year and once we make those commitments for those funds we have to commit those funds to get the county funds so and once you you build the project you can't go back and then ask for more money after it's built you know then you, then you have to go to that nice try but um, you got to go to the you got to go to the next project so then in theory with this request we might be able to then add to the five that we're getting back. We're not just going to request five, we'll request more because the like, total project would be more. My recommendation would be that we request, request, excuse me, 800, um, and then talk to them and explain to them. And, and Kathleen Karen already knows that, and then that knowing that this wasn't funded and we can't really do that, it's not really a transfer, but that will be going away. So we're really, we're really asking this year for the delta between the two, but that's kind of how it works. So I wouldn't just ask for the 457. And that oh. would close the gap that we would have. To right. We want, we want a, a 2018 new tranche of money, plus we want the 457 or so rolled into a new site. Right. Right. We want that rolled into Stone Town. Then we <clears> want <throat> another State County grant into the Stone Town complex. You, you could, in reality, take the monies that you've already put aside and build a turf field, the, our portion of the turf field at Lakeland, and then still apply for a Passaic County grant for Stonetown ball field. You could, you could, you could do them both nice. based upon the funds that are here. Um, it would just be recommitting our funds to a different process. That's all. We have a couple more years of funding to try to pull together before we can take a stab at Stonetown though. You need, you need lights that track. Um, you need a grandstand. You need people, please see, can't have you know everybody with the folding chairs go hiking up through there, you know you're gonna need some place to people sit. And right um, now, it's gonna be you know parking is a is a huge issue because when you go there and the, you know when there's two games going on at changes. once, it's changes. Game changes it's, are brutal. I was actually wondering. I did a I did a lap, and I'm pretty sure the Highlands doesn't watch, so I don't mind actually saying this. What if we um, are we allowed to line the grass? Because that's, that's legit two rows of parking and an aisle in between. And I was kind of thinking like St. Catharines and they got the, the way it was designed. It was designed to be parking in the middle. To do. The problem park. is if you park in it um, and it's wet, you're not coming out. You're, you're going to get towed out, you know. So, and we're not allowed to take the grass out and put gravel because that's gravel is considered impervious as well. So, so it's challenging. So those are the challenges that you have. I think either way we should apply for something. So. I'll say I'd rather see it at Stonetown. I think Lakeland's going to have one as time goes on. I'd like to see it at Stonetown because if we could invest in a property our Board of Ed owns, that would be nice. I understand it's more money. I think it would benefit us more, though. I know as a Rovers coach, I'd love to have my kids at a, a lit soccer field to have practices in sure. late fall. I don't know if it's necessarily going to happen, but I think it's way more likely if it happened at Stonetown. And okay. I think, like, the walking track would get a lot of use out there, too, from at least what I've heard from Lakeland gets used a lot, yes, it does. <clears> and they <throat> need the lights on for seniors and whatnot and adults. 
you know. So yeah, it does get used a lot. Okay, so it's, it's the pleasure of the body that we uh, make this application to Passaic County Open Space Fund. You want me to read this resolution? Do you have a resolution? Would that be easier? Andy? <laughs> yes. Uh, Kelly, uh, Kelly was kind we'll enough. Have Kelly it. was, it's on green. It's in green? Oh. Scott, is that green? Yeah. It's the one Sorry. that's in front of me. I forgot to tell you. I forgot to put it on. Um, I this says, uh, whereas the borough of Ringwood applied for Passaic County Open Space Fund grants in 14, 15, and 16 for a multi-use turf field at Hewitt School, and whereas the borough officials have met with DEP with regards to the project on numerous occasions in order to meet the DEP requirements for the multi-use turf field at Hewitt School, which application appears to be onerous due to the environmental constraints. And whereas the Open Space Advisory Committee and the Recreation Commission have supporting resolutions for the application for the 2018 Passaic County Open Space Trust Fund for a multi-use turf field. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Municipal Council of the Borough of Ringwood, Passaic County, New Jersey, hereby authorizes the Borough Manager to apply for the 2018 Passaic County Open Space Grant for a multi-use uh, turf field at the Stonetown Ball Field with a secondary location at Lakeland High School. And that mirrors what the other two bodies did. Doesn't mean that you have to go with that, but that's, that's what they did. No one has any other like changes. I, I would just make the motion to pass as is. I'll second. second. Go ahead. Uh, Bolton and Martucci. Got it. Roll call, please. Council members Bolton. Yes. Davison. Yes. Ferretti. Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci. Yes. Council members Noonan. Yes. O'Keefe. Yes. Mayor Spear. Yes. What was that, Kelly? 55? That's 55. Library agreement obviously would then be 54. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, we're working on the uh, 2018 budget. Um, as, as you all know, this year is going to be a, uh, a challenging one. Uh, we have our first budget meeting with the new council in, uh, on Thursday. You, you are going to appoint and those. During mayor members of the council, I'm going to go okay. around and, uh, and name some. some okay, good. Names. I don't mean to be. Uh, you just go charge. charge. Okay. <laughs> um, Drive forward. We are in the process of interviewing a new municipal court clerk. Our uh, court administrator took another position closer to home. So we're in that process right now. And that's a, that's a complicated process. You have to, the assignment judge, our judge, the, uh, the person who's in charge of the Passaic County Courts, everybody has to be involved in that interview process. So we're, we're in the middle of that now. Lawyers. Um, <laughs> we, have, uh, we have completed our stormwater uh, uh, program for 2017, and we had another successful year uh, with the DPW. Uh, the DP has expanded the stormwater regulations, and, uh, which require a little bit more effort on our part, not really a little bit more, a lot more effort. Um, so we're, we're looking and reviewing those rules now to ensure compliance for 2018 as we, as we start to roll up to that part of the season. Um, DEP has also established new rules and requirements for the maintenance of our water system, uh, which are, we're reviewing as well. Um, different things that we have to do to valves, different uh, maintenance that we have to do on valves. So we're in the process of doing that now with the water department. Um, the DEP has also, there's a lot of DEP discussion tonight. Can you tell you, they must get all those letters out in December. Um, the DEP has determined that uh, there's, there's a need that has to be met for the effluent and the copper and zinc final limitations. So um, they, they're changing those numbers for January 1st, 2019. Um, our plant has to be uh, retrofitted for that. Um, we're in the process of looking at what do we have to do getting an engineer. Our engineer preliminarily thinks it's going to be a $300,000 uh, expansion of that to, to accommodate this new requirements, but we're not, that's a, that's a rough estimate from Jeff. What requirement is that? Okay? Um, hold on. Zinc and copper. Uh, zinc and copper. In drinking water or wastewater? No, in wastewater. 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 So we're looking into that. Jeff has an estimate roughly, uh, but we're going to get more information and we'll advise you as, uh, as things go forward. Um, the certifying green acres uh, um, for the property that, that the, we're looking to acquire on Greenwood Lake Turnpike, uh, I haven't gotten the report yet. Once that report comes back to us, we'll then talk to you guys about negotiating with the, uh, with the property owner. Um, I expect it to come in at the same number, but I don't know until, I don't know. Do you know if they made the inspection, Kelly, or no? No, snow. she's coming. The snow came, the so snow. she's coming a different day. So I'll get back to you next month about that. Um, with the threes and thaws that we've had, we've had several water main breaks. Uh, it was pretty, really cold, um, and we've had a lot of water main breaks. We've also experienced a lot of homes that have some freezing pipes, you know, so if you see some water flowing out of people's uh, 
houses, by all means, call the police department. A lot of vacant homes in town. There's a lot of uh, foreclosures. Sometimes they turn the water off, sometimes they don't. Um, the Skyline Lakes Drive last week, uh, we had to shut the road down because there was an ice, uh, you know, like eight inches thick. Well, that was all running down from a house into the street during that zero degree weather week. And uh, so that's why we closed it down and had to scrape through it. So if you see water running out of a home, by all means, please let us know and so that we can gain access and, and get that turned off. In an incident like that, are we able to place a lien on the house for the cost of that repair? So we don't really repair it. We just shut it off at the street. Okay. Yeah, we shut it off the street. They have to repair it. We don't do the repair. Um, and if, in fact, the water meter freezes or a pipe freezes in any home, whether it's vacant or not vacant, we charge for that. That's the homeowner's responsibility. So if uh, DPW gets called out in the middle of the night and, and it's overtime or double time or whatever the contract calls for, the homeowner actually pays for that. Same thing with the meter, same thing with, you know, if their pipes are frozen, they have to pay for a plumber to thaw them. We don't really mm -hmm. do that. Um, but uh, generally speaking, we try to help mm -hmm. as much as we can. You know, people, people need water. So... Um, yeah, so all those charges, once in a while you'll get somebody who objects to them, but, you know, uh, often people put insulation and their pipes around the outside and the wind blows on that and it just freezes the pipes and, and breaks them. So um, it's not an uncommon thing. We do know the ones where the pipes are buried too shallow and they're, it's a year after year problem and we try to notify them in advance, hey, you know, make sure you get some salt hay on top of your pipe or more mulch or something. So, um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's the uh, freeze and thaws. We've had 11 snow events this, this winter season or not, believe it or not. Um, and uh, we're hoping that that ends quickly, but uh, it doesn't seem to be. We've had a lot of ice. Um, we've also been salting the Board of Education properties. Um, they have a truck that, was, that fell into disrepair that they didn't have funding to replace. So I said, you know, look, we're all in this together. We have salt trucks. Why would you buy a new salt truck when we have them? Let's, we'll just keep, we'll salt your properties. Sometimes there's a little bit of a conflict because they come the day after we, they don't, they don't plow when we plow, they come the day after. So sometimes we have to, uh, you know, bring some guy, somebody in when their lots are clear, they still plow it. Uh, but we're working on that. So uh, there's no sense them replacing a truck if we, if we have them. So um, currently we have shared services with, uh, with the, uh, Board of Education, Pompton Lakes, Wanakee, and Bloomingdale. And some of these contracts help to generate some extra costs. Um, Westbrook Road, uh, many, many calls about Westbrook Road. A lot of the potholes were on the bridge. A lot of the potholes were in Wanakee, and we had a couple on our side as well. Um, we patched the potholes on the bridge, even though it's, we're not really supposed to. That's a county project. Uh, we patched the potholes in Wanakee. Um, they have a new manager down there, and they... If we were going to be out, we're going to close the road down, and we're going to have traffic direction, we might as well just do it. Um, there'll be a time when I need to borrow something from them that they'll help us out. So, so we did all those uh, um, last week uh, because some of those holes were uh, rather large. So I know the, the guy in Wanaku is new. Is it possible to get, like, a standing agreement? I don't know if it's year-to-year -year or multi-year where it's just, like, we'll take care of at least – this part of Westbrook Road for them. I mean, maybe maybe the the whole length for for some sort of chargeback, so that. I'd really prefer they take care of their own because um, you know it travels in and out. And um, but this say this case was so bad that I I just said we we have to just do it. You know, and uh, um, we could do it. We we often work back and forth on some type of shared service agreement with them. We have other shared services, but this one just made sense. They don't have the mech They don't have the ability to do hot asphalt in the winter. Um, we get the hot box, right? We have the hot box that we can do it. So, uh, so we can look at that down the road. But there's not enough costs to currently to warrant a whole shared service and a chargeback. And sometimes the the cost to do all that legal stuff costs more than what we're actually going to charge them. Snake Den Road, Bloomingdale. Right, we got a Bloomingdale uh, agreement. Yeah, we take care of the section of Bloomingdale that's in Ringwood. That's that's adjacent to Ringwood. That they they're landlocked. They can't get to it. So we charge them each year for that. Because yeah. I'm was shocked to find out that that part of the like I knew Westbrook Road went in and out but for the wall and that entryway to the to the bridge to be Wanakew right I had no idea and I just figured we're always going to get the call and we'll probably get more calls than they will so right. anything that we could do to kind of I'll say like give you the green light ahead of time so it's like you know you can just do it as opposed to trying to I've been kind of just doing it and it just makes sense and if it gets to a point where it's onerous and it's very expensive well then we'll have to charge back um but we, we try to work together on that, so. Okay, where was I? Freeze and thaws. Um, Westbrook Road. Westbrook Road, right? Yeah, I did that. Okay, so uh, the reporter problem, I encourage everybody to go to a reporter problem when you have 
issues in town because it's available 24 7 and it goes directly into our work order system so jackie it, so it's it's a much quicker process than calling <laughs> waiting for us to call them back and then us doing the exact same thing so uh www.ringwoodnj.net report a problem um, is the best way to get us some of those expedited reports i'm happy to report that our dog and cat licenses applications and payments are online and uh, now available to our residents to be paid online and we're looking for uh, a lot more things to do uh, uh, online so that the, it's, it's easier for public access. Kelly and I have been looking at uh, seamless docs where now all of our documents are going to be, we're going to be able to uh, put them online with fillable forms. And, you know, we're going to go department by department. And um, th that's proven to be uh, pretty, pretty successful so far. So we're going to continue along with that program. Next month, I'm going to have the operating agreement for the Wanake Valley Regional Sewage Authority uh, for you to review as well. And a, and a health department, we're working on shared service, uh, our updated agreement with Wanake. Um, and let's see, tonight I have a resolution for turf field. I did that already. Um, we talked about it earlier. Uh, the rec department continues to they schedule the, uh, the, the security guards for the school monitors uh, for the after school programs. and. And, um, you know, I, unfortunately, it's one of those things that, that the, the school requires. And I understand why they, you know, they, they're leaving their building open. It's a big building. Um, so um, I think the gentleman that was here tonight, uh, his program isn't getting charged for it. It's definitely getting charged through rec. But, uh, but I understand his concern. But the schools want to make sure that they're, you know, they're, they're protected. And there, there has been some um, vandalism problems, if you will, in the schools while well, rec programmers were there in the past. And that's one of the things that promoted their thought that, hey, you know what, let's have somebody in the building at the time. So and we don't have the janitors there any longer that we used to have. Um, we have we have contractors now. So it's not as simple to have a, a, a school employee there if something happens. And um, while the, the company seems to be very cooperative with us, I have to say, um, there are some limitations with communication, so it's probably good to have somebody there for that. Um, the ice rink is back this year. Um, it's our, our, uh, our little guys, are, Ringwood Hawks, have been using the, uh, the program on Tuesday and Thursday nights for practice, and it's been a pretty good success, so we're happy to see that. Any um, security guard? We don't have any security guard there. <laughs> on, that's not true. On weekends, uh, we have a rink monitor because... You know, during the week, kids can, they bring their pucks and they play hockey and it's okay. But on the weekends, there's some families that want to go there. And you cannot have hockey sticks and pucks on the same ice as, you know, general Family. open skate. So on the weekends, we usually have somebody there to say, hey, listen, this is the hours for open skate. And, but during the week, we don't really get any families or people that are going down there just to skate. So we haven't been doing that. But uh, so there's not a security guard there, but there is a monitor for safety reasons. Um, with the security guard for the school, like when you, let's say you have the team, is it just like their community pass fee covers X number of practice sessions? No. So the, they can't book more? The, the, when you pay fee for a rec program, it goes into the rec trust. Like if, when you pay for basketball, it goes into the rec trust. But we don't take the fees for the security guard out of the program. They use that for basketballs and, and nets and, and uniforms and whatever it is they need to, for the program. Um, so the, the security guard actually comes from through the, the recreation budget, through the rec department. So, and the school shares that cost. Um, they pay half and we pay half. If it's a program that's not a rec program, those individuals get a bill from us for, you know, like, uh, I, I, I'm not, I don't know off the top of my head, but I know that there's some individuals who use it. Like CLIA, as an example, I think they pay for the security guards. And, and the, the, the other programs, they, they pay because it's not our program. But, but that's funded through the borough budget. You know, the, our, our recreation line item doesn't really go to particular sports. It goes to that over general stuff, security guards, um, the uh, background checks on coaches. That, that kind of thing is, is covered under the, under the general uh, line item for recreation. Right. That makes sense. And then for, because he's travel, which is a little different than a rec program, so then it, it still comes out of that line item, though. I think he's travel, which is considered a rec program. Some of the travels are okay. rec programs. <laughs> I was that that threw me for a minute okay yeah and he's right that the school doesn't do some of the programs so we've tried to increase some of them you know with the with their um, issues that they had last year they, they they had to cut some of those things and we tried to fill some of that void if we could so uh, robotics and music too yeah we'll fill it in all oh. yeah it's very popular from what i heard too the robotics try to do what you can yeah the library uh that's a program that we did with the library and, and shared service with us and it's and it's worked but they're it's getting, it's growing and growing and growing to where they, they 
kind of they might be pushing that our way a little bit in the near future to say you know you okay it's kind of outgrown us take it over and it's and it's great I it, there's a waiting list I guess for the kids which surprises me that the you know, the, the, way of the world now robotics yeah I mean then <clears throat> definitely have, something they need what we've tried to do is provide programs for kids that aren't just sports you know mm -hmm. and uh, the library has done a great job of that the robotics is another example yeah. of that as well so um um, I'm just going to briefly, re rec spring programs are, uh, are now open for registration, baseball, basketball, girls, softball. Go to the rec, pro the rec website and take a look. Um, uh, they have a fit to be toned weightlifting program for seniors. Um, they'll be, they'll be offering another eight week, uh, session that starting in February. So all that you can go through community pass or call the rec office. Also memberships for our dog park are available through the rec office for 2018. And Mayor, I think unless I've forgotten something, that's all I have for this evening. You could not have forgotten. I thing. might have forgotten I think that was something. Exhaustive. <laughs> Any questions for the manager? How are we doing on a rose salt? <laughs> uh, we, we keep ordering. Um, you know, we've used a lot of salt this year when it's when it's 20 degrees and below, and and you got ice in the roads. It's it's a problem. What about the brine? We still brine. Um, there were a couple of days that I did not brine. There was so much raw salt on the roads. I said, we are not wasting brine. The salt's underneath. Um, you know, a, an average storm um, throughout the course of a season costs about $16,000 with salt and labor and, and whatnot. So it's an expensive process. But everybody needs to get home, and everybody needs it. And I look at our roads in comparison to other towns, and I, uh, I'm really happy with what, what the guys are doing. And uh, we, we do occasionally get mailboxes here or there. We do have some issues, but... Uh, um, I think uh, it works well. A lot of the conditions of the roads been great. Do you see any possible uh, issue with supply? Yeah, did a couple of years yeah, how ago. Was the, how was the salt a couple doing? years ago, they get it? no it, town could buy. You had to go beg, that? borrow, and plead from yeah. the state to get it. Last year, I, I did have to do a lot of horse trading to get salt because everybody was out of it. No, it looks like the supply is good. Um, as a matter of fact, the contractor from last year, as you all know, we're being all the people in the Morris County. Uh, we're, uh, Morris County Co-op is being sued because there was a vendor who said, uh, you, you know, they, even though we don't have any obligation to buy, um, they ask you how many totals if you were to buy you would use. Well, then we didn't use them because they were higher than everybody else. We used the other vendor. Now they're suing everybody in the Morris County uh, Co-op saying, hey, listen, we had all this salt in stock. You didn't buy it. Um, it's a great loss to us. So that's in, say, county court. So that whole volume of salt for the Morris County Co-op is available somewhere. Uh, but I got to tell you, the, the people that we have right now are $12 a ton cheaper, and we call them, and two days later, it's here. So the, 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 the new company has been awesome. You know, before we had to, we'd call them, and three weeks later, we'd get, we'd get the salt. And um, so, um, so this year, uh, I think also some of the brining, uh, uh, Mayor, uh, Debbie Mayor, is, is cut down on the amount of salt we use. Because what happens is you put that brine down, and then it doesn't adhere to the road. You can plow it off easier. Um, so, of course, there's always exceptions to that, but. Uh, How has uh, Passaic County been helping us, or you know, doing their part of the, of the roads? Um, I'm not sure that they responsive I, this year? This year they've been responsive. You know, last year they had a couple trucks break, and, you know, and, and I work pretty well with, the, with Passaic County. There's times when they, you know, they need help, and I send a truck, and there's times that if I need salt, they've, they've given salt to us. But, but no, the Passaic County team has been uh, pretty responsive. I will say the DPW guys were um, very, I don't know, I, in my mind it's very creative when uh, we had like the warming and then the freezing so there was all of the ice on the roads because it just pooled and, and, and right. froze and they really worked the, the plows in and kind of like busted it up and tried to help clear some of the, in some neighborhoods, like really thick ice that uh, was quite dangerous. Yeah, there were some spots uh, coming off, the, especially after that heavy rain, you know, you had heavy rain and then, uh, you know, 16 degrees never works out well. So. I'm, I'm, didn't check the weather for tomorrow, but I'm nervous. <laughs> it's going to get cold again. I think. You're okay for tomorrow, but I hold on. Mm -hmm. So, any other questions? Okay, thanks, man. Fantastic. Uh, any, anything for executive session? I have nothing for executive oh. session. Oh. Very good. Oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Oh. Uh, attorney's report. Uh, there being nothing Cancel. for executive session, then I have uh, no report, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Fantastic. Um, Mayor and members of council. Um, I, I just have a quick question. I thought we were going to do the resolution on the green team tonight. Yes, Wasn't yes. You, okay. know, you want to bring that up when we... Uh, I do. Let me, let me start with Councilwoman O'Keefe. <laughs> okay, yes. I'd like to make a motion to have a resolution to re... 
Ignite, the green team here in the borough. Um, do I need to read this or the resolution? I don't think you need I to mean, read you it. Spread in the record if you just want to give a summary. Uh, but it's set forth in there. You can all, uh, sometimes these resolutions are so copy, you can just say as set forth on the record. Okay. okay. As set okay. forth yeah, on the, the record. Give, then. Yeah, give, the, give the number. Give the title in the. So and so is set forth on the record. Okay. Really, what so number are you going to give it to? This is 2018-56, and this is going to be the appointment of the green team. And I want to thank some of the members of the green team who have come out tonight. I know some have left already because I guess we're going out a little late. But um, if you want to stand up and just, you don't have to introduce yourself, but I would <laughs> like people to see well, that you're you. here. And this is just a small portion of the green team. We had 14 volunteers mm -hmm. that have stepped up, and I really appreciate it. And as set forth, I do want to add one other name because we have um, Ellen Ewing submitting yes, a uh, late mm -hmm. application, yeah. but she'll be a valuable member of our team. And I do want to invite everybody on the team. There will be a Mayor's Climate Summit at Rutgers University on February 3rd, which I think will be very educational. And I brought it up to my department manager, Mercedes, and he has given me a passenger sprinter van to transport you all down to Rutgers University because Mercedes thinks Climate Summit is something very important in a day where we heard that our federal government has just put a 30% tariff on our solar panels coming into the United States and is thinking of opening our Jersey Shore for offshore drilling, I think it's important that we at a local level step up and really let people know how important the environment and everything is to all of us. And I'm so happy that all of you have volunteered, and thank you. I think we'll accomplish great things for the town. That's can, it. Can they leave the passenger van with the borough when they go to Atlanta? <laughs> can we what? Can they leave the passenger van with the borough when they go to I'm Atlanta? I'm sorry. I do have to return it, and I had to put in how many miles I'll be using on it to ensure that it is only used for our field trip to Rutgers. It's already... Signed, sealed, and delivered. <laughs> but so, could try. So I have a motion by Councilwoman O'Keefe for this resolution. Okay. Is, is, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, there are two versions of the. Oh, I'm sorry. The resolution. Okay. Uh, well, I was going. I'm sorry. I okay. was going with um, Councilman Bolton's because that's what I thought. That's we what I was going okay. with too. Okay. Okay. So um, that was at your place, and it's highlighted at the top that says Councilman from revised from Councilman Bolton. Yeah. Not surprising anyone, three pages versus two, it's long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's comprehensive, you, I'd well, say. Well, I have, I have a couple, couple issues with it. Um, uh, fourth, whereas. Um, changes to fleet purchasing and maintenance uh, and operational changes, um, you know, uh, maybe good, maybe bad, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't know. All language has a purpose. I do not understand quite what the purpose uh, of this is, unless it's you know we're going to be looking at you know yeah, we're, we're going to be looking at at changing the way we buy vehicles or operational changes. And I don't know what they are. I don't want to give the green team a um, you know some kind of uh, I don't know what you what would you call it. Is it, it you're 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 looking to change the way the borough does. It's it's business. It's it's a it's an advisory board. It they're is. going to be specialized. You know, they're, they're, they have they have specialized knowledge that they're that they're pulling in and gathering and providing to us. Um, but to you know directly jump into um, uh, changes in the borough operations, it might be a little bit more. It might be, might have been a stretch. That might have been uh, also like okay. down in mission. Um, strive to coordinate and plan sustainability activities across municipal departments. Uh, you know, hey, that's a thing. You know, boards and commissions, those are citizens. Uh, municipal departments, they're, uh, they're employees. You know, they, um, they, they, they all report to the manager, you know, who, you know, who reports uh, to us and is held to a budget. Um, you know, so I, I don't want to put, put it out there as if we're, you know, fully open to everything. We're open to all new ideas, but 
that was a little bit. I think I think we we pushed the envelope on the you know on the nice standard plain vanilla resolution that we passed in 2010, and you uh, you know you gave it some tweaks there that that caught my eye. Um, well, you know, absolutely, it's an advisory group with um, suggestions made to the council. That's correct. That's pretty much where 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 it begins and ends, and definitely uh, suggestions. And exactly. recommendations with regards to borough operations mm -hmm. are welcome, and you know we've got no, got no problem there. Right. Exactly. You know? So hopefully so, it's phrased as, and I will I will say I think the only original piece of craftsmanship on my part was to like introduce our centennial year to it. Everything else I kind of saw in other towns, things, and kind of uh, borrowed yes. and pieced together. Mm -hmm. And and the intent there, and hopefully the way it's it's phrased comes across is just sort of a, a range of things that they can consider and look at, but they're not actually driving or doing anything. And it particularly where the, um, the, the department initiatives comes in, a, a caveat about obviously working with the, with the manager is certainly in order. It was just sort of a, a yeah. trying starter to be, point to, trying be, like, to be trying to be comprehensive. Consider these it's things and, and feed them in. But they, I don't think, can actually um, – Directly change or, or execute on any of those sorts of things. Obviously. No, I mean we think we've had we've had electric cars. Yeah. We've tried them. We've tried. You know we. They're evolving in a big way yeah, right now. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they, they are. They certainly are. Uh -huh. I still, don't, I still don't know when they're going to be green, but you know they're they are they're, evolving. You know, it's, it's, as far is as better. the energy that they use, my friend Regina had a B class, a Mercedes B class. She plugged it into her garage. She saw no increase in her utility bill. But she didn't miss any uh, gas bills that year. Plus, mm -hmm. if you think about a diesel operation, such as a school bus and the pollution mm -hmm. that comes from a diesel, if you had an electric school bus, I know I've sat behind school buses that, um, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, it, you know, there are things that could benefit, but certainly it's only an advisory thing and trying to keep up on the different changes that are coming. And things are changing constantly in this, and quickly. In this yeah. arena. Agreed. To your point, though, I will say, obviously, like, electric cars are only as green as your electric supply. That was something yes, that that's correct. Something taught me in college is, like, you know, if you're fueling your electric car after a coal plant, it's actually less efficient yes. than just driving gas. So it's All right. clean supply. Yeah, one? sorry. <laughs> so I'm sorry, you have, I have three-year resolutions here. Yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> you do. This you is the 2010 okay. one? So the 2010 138 is what we passed in 2010. Okay. The next one is basically the same thing as 2010 but with okay. new people. Right. And then we had a revise from Councilman Bolton, which is what's highlighted at the top, okay. which is the one we're talking about right now. Okay. Well, as long as it's on the advisory committee. Yeah, as long as we're, we're, with, we're with that understanding. Okay. Right. And move it. I second. Um, and we want to uh, amend that to resolution include to include Ellen Ewing, yes. Ellen Ewing. <coughs> Which would bring it to 14. Members. That would bring it to 14, and we'll be working closely with the Environmental Commission to help uh, get certification and money for the town. This is the one we're voting on? Uh, yes, yes, this is the, the Bolton revision. <coughs> so not this one. Okay. Yes. Not that, nor that. Got it. Do we want to add a, a parenthetical after? Um, no. <laughs> Pencils down, Ryan. Pencils down. <laughs> the only thing that I would say in this one is uh, some of the references, like the reference that township needs to be borough. Yeah. It's not. It's not a township, and um, just, yeah. just, it would just clean up the language. I would. That's all. Yeah. I told you to write. I swear. Yeah, I, has, could uh, I could tell you. I could tell you. <laughs> copied and pasted. Okay, so or as I like to say, stand on the shoulders of taller people. The uh, yeah, like so that. so so the final resolution will be amended as as discussed here. Yeah, got it. Okay, I got it. And we have a motion from Okeet. Do we have a second, Kelly? I had a actually I had a motion by Deputy Mayor Martucci with a second by. Is that the reverse? No, no that's I, I heard correct. it right. You okay, heard it correctly. Okay, thank you. Okay then, roll call, please. Council Member Bolton. Yes. Davison. Yes. Peretti. Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci. Yes. Council members Noonan? Abstain. O'Keefe? Yes. And Mayor Spear? Yes. Okay. okay. So uh, Councilwoman O'Keefe, any, anything else? No, I think 
Um, that covers it for That'll this. Do it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Best of luck to the green team. Thanks. Uh, Councilman Davison. <coughs> How are you doing, sir? Very good, thank you. <laughs> we don't have any report, except the county clerk's office will be open the first Saturday in February from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, and we will provide free passport photos. Uh -huh. oh. oh, nice. Very good. Okay, uh, Councilman Bolton. A few things that I will try to run through very quickly in the interest of time. Um, I did want to say um, a thank you to all the dignitaries that had come out for the reorganization meeting. It was great to have them all here um, with a particular shout out to uh, Freeholder Assad who came into the room late. Obviously, I have a soft spot in my heart for people coming into the room late. Um, <laughs> and Kelly was good enough to, to amend the minutes, but I wanted to give him a shout out for anybody who's watching who didn't realize that, that he was in the back. Um, I did want to say um, and I've, I've shared it with some of the members on the council, some of the people off of the council, um, that, you know, as hard fought and good and experienced as it was, uh, the campaign is over and we are here to work together. We are one council and we're excited, like tonight, getting things done with, with everybody together. And I want to say that out loud for, for everybody to hear that, you know, we're, we're here to get stuff done and we're looking forward to, to working in partnership with everybody. Um, and to that end, one of the things that we had started uh, as we're meeting everybody was coffee with the residents. And it's a tradition that we are going to continue with no more than three of us, because as I've learned, there can never be more than three council people together. Otherwise, you have a quorum. So that extends to CAG meetings as well, where we can't have, can't have everybody, literally. Um, but we're going to have uh, this Saturday uh, from 8.30 to 9.30. Uh, Location TBD, uh, Rob, Kathy, and myself, but then February 17th at Cupsaw Market, at least uh, Mayor Spear has committed, and I'm trying to do the dates now because we don't have a, another televised opportunity until then. Um, I don't know if coffee at 8.30 would work for you. Fantastic. So, uh, and then hopefully uh, somebody else will join, but we'll be at uh, Cupsaw Market from 8.30 to 9.30 on uh, February 17th as well. For uh, those of you who are interested in supporting the St. Patrick's Day Parade, February 9th, there's a beef steak at the Bloomingdale Firehouse. So, or if you just like beef steak, even if you don't like the parade, give the parade committee money. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Um, uh, for anybody who loves the band Rubik's Cube, they're coming back to Cupsaw Lake on March 2nd, which is a ways off, but tickets tend to sell out. So get that on the website. And then uh, I was at the library earlier today, and I didn't know that they had ever done this, but they actually have uh, I, free tax preparation service for residents for website. a long time, actually. So for February, March, and April, they're there Mondays and Thursdays, 10, 15, 11, 15, 12, 30, and 1, 30, but call them to make an appointment because obviously they'll, they'll book up. So uh, if you're, I don't know, if you just want to hand with taxes, do that. Um, and then they have a great program on Saturday, February 10th. Um, there's a concert lecture by a professor on the songs of World War II. So all of the old standards about like, don't sit under the apple tree, you'll never know, I'll walk alone. It's not just the songs, but also the story behind them. So if you're a history geek, that might appeal. So that's uh, Saturday, February 10th at 1 p.m. Great. Thank you. Tell us Freddy. Yeah. Uh, I want to as well thank everybody who came out to the uh, reorganizational meeting. We had a great crowd and a nice celebration afterwards. I did want to address uh, a concern that was expressed to me by more than one person uh, who had applied or put in a uh, citizen leadership form to be on one or more board or committee. Um, they felt we should have more transparency, and I agree, with uh, who has applied and what their, you know, what their experience or uh, education is and so uh, so it's not potentially implied that anyone anyone were to be chosen uh, via party affiliation or family relationship or any other reason so uh, to put them at ease and know that uh, we're only choosing those people most qualified for the positions so uh, in the future if we could look to be more transparent about who we choose and why um, if had more than one person people with almost 30 years experience, people who are doctors coming uh, justifiably saying uh, 
you know, having concerns about it. So, um, you know, in the future, if we could do that, that would be great. Well, I was the Board of Health. I, mean, uh, I actually not, uh, put to a Democrat, uh, Al Fidelity, for the Board of Health. Fantastic. Okay, because we lost two people on the Board of Health that were familiar with lake communities and lake ecology and the effects. And Al's got a lot of history and a lot of knowledge. So he had expressed interest, and I encouraged the, him uh, to be on that side. I'm sure we are doing the right thing, but I think with more transparency, we can ensure that everybody feels the same way. I think and I can own, uh, from my perspective or for anybody who was, was watching, I think it's, um, as new people like now, maybe a little more comfortable interrupting, although I promise I'm learning my Robert's rules, uh, <laughs> particularly like with the large crowd, probably didn't feel comfortable speaking up, didn't know exactly what to expect, and that's also on us for not like reaching out, kind of having the conversation ahead of time to, to get the rhythm. So like I had reached out to somebody who was, um, was upset to try and explain that, you know, it actually wasn't what it might have come across as. I had only written some names down and, you know, didn't actually have uh, a full full background on, on everybody. So it was not um, necessarily like has it come across and that hopefully going forward we could actually just proactively have that conversation. Mayor, I just want to, we, we send all the, inf we, we, Kelly sends all the citizen information to you guys. So we, yeah. that's kind of where our yeah. process in this ends and, and you guys kind of take yeah, that no, over at that point. And I can totally that's, that, that's like, direct pass through. That's it happens. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it happens. I so. don't know why I assumed that it would have been like printed, and I, I should have the reference. And she did it tonight, which was great. So it's like she's learning where like the huge blind spots that I have in my brain are. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I, so I tried to own the fact that it was just a, a misunderstanding and a lack of experience, at, at least on on this part here, where you know I I didn't have that as a reference to even put forth some of the names because I didn't recognize them. And I can certainly vouch, I've worked with Alan uh, at Cupsoft for years and he's a great, great addition to the Board of Health. And I didn't even know he was a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> Neither did I. Councilman Noonan. Uh, in these severe weather times that we're having, don't forget your neighbors, check up on them so if you don't see them. You know, they'd give away his tracks in the snow and so forth, you know. Um, we have plenty of elderly people in this town. And keep them in your thoughts and check up on them. Because they, uh, they might not have a computer and be able to report that their water is down or something like that. Mm -hmm. So definitely keep that. And on also that note in the severe weather, I'd like to thank the DPW guys. They've been doing a great job with the roads. And to dig a hole and climb in to fix a water pipe for everybody when it's 15 below wind chill, and I witnessed this with my own Thanks. eyes, that takes guts, it takes dedication, and that's with the guys at our DPW. And I just want to thank them. They're yeah, spending a lot of that. days and nights away from their families, so a lot of residents can have their water mm -hmm. restored. And it's been a brutal winter. I know contractors all over this area have been out um, fixing water main breaks everywhere. There's been, they've been everywhere. Um, and also, diesels aren't as dirty as they used to be with the Im implementation of reburners and DEF fluid and everything else. So even that technology yeah, we have has blue, um, quite a bit. I have to experience it all the time. It's it's interesting to deal with and another challenge. There's been some controversy over that also with um, the DEF blue and mm. other things. But I agree that we're making strides. And I did have one other thing, Mayor Spear, that I wanted to bring up. Well, you're worse than Ryan. No, I'm not. Oh, I am not. I will not. I will not. At least you're prompt. Yeah. I just wanted to say I was here on December 29th when there was a line of people that were um, prepaying their taxes in December. And I think there's something that all of us on this council can agree with is that um, this new tax package, reform package, is a major concern for all New Jersey residents. And I think it's really encouraging in New Jersey that we've been seeing our Democratic and Republican representatives working together to really push back because a lot of people see this as a major concern for New Jersey, that it is going to affect uh, jobs and it's gonna push people out of New Jersey. And this could impact our property values. So I know that Congress has been Gottenheimer and our Representative Lance have been reaching out to municipalities to develop a tax strategy 
to help bring relief. And I want the residents of Ringwood to know that we are aware of this problem and that we will use all our resources to work with our state representatives to ensure that we pursue every avenue to bring tax relief to all our residents. Well, well put. I was on a conference call with Senator uh, Congressman Gottheimer's office and a bunch of mayors were on it. They're looking for some kind of help from our legislature, our state yes. legislature. There's a few municipalities who think that they don't actually need that that kind of state authorization a lot of to people. be able to do this, mm -hmm. uh, but that is not clear. Right. Um, I want to make sure that my residents are tax advantaged in every way possible. You I know? agree. So, and I don't want to be the test case to go running some kind of shell game with the federal tax system and 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 be paying those legal fees fees well so i think we can a, let we'll, we'll yeah. find a, yeah we'll find that middle ground yeah. and stay stay on top of the uh i on was top of the situation on a call too. saddle river fairlawn paramus was, were yes. on it and yeah. it's important that we let the towns with all these resources do that heavy lifting for us <laughs> yeah. and therefore after they have done that we can tap into what they have found and uh take advantage of Precisely. what we can use to advantage our residents well, here in so Ringwood. That's good. I appreciate that that you're backing me up down on that. And you, yeah, we have we have, the more years we have listening to what's going on out there. It's Absolutely, be some fast moving stuff is, is what's happening out there now with this. Um, there with, must be trailblazers on that. No, <laughs> no, no, no. And now I'm done. It's not our style. Are you sure? I, I'm really. I'm done. gonna check back with you before <laughs> we finish. But, Mr. Deputy Mayor, uh, I just got a couple things. Number one. Uh, as a member of the St. Patty's Day Parade Committee, uh, the parade doesn't happen by itself. This being the 100th year anniversary, uh, they tend to have it bigger and better. Bands, what's up? But we also need to raise money. So the best way is to be able <laughs> to eat. Uh, at the Bloomingdale uh, Fire Department on February 9th, beefsteak. Uh, with the uh, entertainment and it's um, 55 dollars a ticket it's a great buy and all, all the funds go to the uh, St. Patrick's Day committee to help fund finance the various bands and uh, fees that they pay to run the parade um, with that being said the, the second thing I want to talk about is the um, the library. Uh, we pay a significant amount of our budget, uh, $800,000 plus um, work that we do uh, with our staff to fix things on there, okay? Uh, and it's to be used as a center uh, for meetings. It's, a, uh, it's, it's paid for with taxpayer dollars and uh, it's meant to be used as a new area, okay? Um, and I'm sensitive to that because we do pay out quite a bit of our taxpayer monies to keep the library going and keep it in operation. Um, also, when I first started talking to Scott a month or two ago and I started he hearing stuff about people wanting to use this room, this is not a community room. It is not. It's a, a meeting room for the council, as well as some of the other commissions uh, under this government, but it's also administrative, police, and other departments, okay? It's not, not built, not planned, and was never intentioned to be a community room. The library, uh, is set up that way, and as Scott said, it's probably ways we can work around uh, different times, okay? It's, you know, other than people want to sit around on, on this dais, the library is, is the, a better situation to have any meeting. Um, now, in terms of televising meetings, again, I'm of the advocate. Um, if you do for one, you have to do for them all. So, that means whoever wants to have their meeting televised, it would put us down the road as to having to do it, okay? I have a preference because one of our big, biggest budget items is the Board of Education, 
and I've wanted to send a film crew down there for as many years as I'm on this council. Okay, that's where a significant amount of our tax dollars are going, and um, yet you know we go on and on year after year. We pass these budgets, and nobody gets to see it because they're running to sports, they're home doing homework with the kids, and uh, it's impossible to get to the board of education meetings. Okay, uh, if we're going to televise anything, I think that would be the first spot to televise because. It would make an impact on all residents because, you know, it's 55% of your tax dollar. And yet you get really, unless you physically go to the meeting, you don't see. And I'm talking about the good and the bad. I mean, they, you get this, uh, there's things that they're going through that you might not know as a citizen. And uh, by the leisure of, of uh, taping their meetings, you can sit home and watch it when you want. Right now, you don't, and you get a significant tax increase, and you don't know why. So, but again, if we do something for the CAG, then we got to do it for everybody. That means, yeah, you know, the Chamber of Commerce, every single group who wants to come in here, we have to do it because then it would be. Uh, it would be not treated fairly. So that's my point of view. Thank you. Oh, very good. Um, I usually don't talk, but um, I've got a couple things here. Uh, we need to set up some committees. Um, in order to just facilitate the, the flow of knowledge back and forth, you know, you guys are, are there's, you guys got hit by a wave. Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there you got, you got to figure out. Um, to, to kind of help with uh, uh, the information going, you know, going, coming out of Borough Hall to the council and, and the decision making and, and, and processes we're going to have to go through throughout the course of the year. I want to name a couple of uh, committees. Uh, I was thinking a budget committee, uh, a redevelopment committee, a super fund committee, and a centennial committee. Uh, what I have here is for a budget committee. You're going to go slower than that, right? Um, I can, <laughs> do I ever go slow? I don't do, I don't do slow. I, I go slow. I got to be out of here in two minutes. Deputy Mayor Martucci, uh, Councilman Bolton, and myself will uh, be the budget committee. I think we have a January 25th meeting at 7 o'clock. Is that correct? Whatever Thursday. Thursday. Is. Thursday. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank Very you. good. Um, for a redevelopment committee, uh, Councilman Noonan. Uh, Deputy Mayor Martucci and Councilwoman O'Keefe. Is that satisfactory? Good. Um, for a uh, Centennial Committee, uh, Councilman Davison, uh, Councilman Noonan, and Councilman Bolton. Uh, Kelly will be reaching out to you to start to offload some of the stuff she's been working on pretty diligently now for, for the past few months. Uh, also, the Centennial Committee, reach out, grab citizens. There's a lot of people that they just told you are interested in, in, in helping out. Hi, Ann. <laughs> <laughs> Ann's always looking for something to do. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Volunteer. Um, and, a, uh, and a Superfund Committee, uh, which will be myself and Councilman Ferretti and any other masochist who might want to care to join. Who's, who's in? Or you don't have to be because a two-person committee is just as simple as that. You know, it doesn't have to be three, but it can be no more than three. I'm, I'm learning this. I'll, yeah, go. Yeah. You want to jump on? I'm saying it very poorly, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a kind of non-committal. Okay, so my, my, my word's no good later. <laughs> so Councilman Bolton, uh, Spear, Freddie, and Bolton for the Superfund Committee. Um, very good. I think that's uh, I think that's all I had for this evening. Uh, with that, uh, generally the new members are the ones to make Wait. the uh, no, 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 you have a general, you have a general public, public comment. Portion. Oh, that's right. After we have no executive session, Correct. now we have another general public. Very good. Robin Canetti, 310 Lakeview Avenue. First of all, I want to thank you for putting back the general public portion at the end of the meeting, which we haven't seen in years. And the whole reason that we were asking for it all this time is because when things come up between the first public portion and now, people get to comment and they don't have to wait till next month. So a couple of things just came up right now. First of all, the Superfund Committee 
please be on the CAG. Because sense. the CAG is the community advisory group, and that way we're all in it together, number one. Um, number two, general public portion, uh, and I'd mentioned this at the reorg meeting, as much as I appreciated it being put back, having it put back after the executive session, if we had had an executive session tonight where Mr. Klimak would have asked everybody to leave the room and we would have all gone away for 20 minutes or a half hour or however long and then first have to come back for a general public portion is kind of unfair to ask the people to do that. So if you're going to have it, have it in an efficient way and move it before the executive session. So if there's an executive session and everybody leaves, they can leave and not hang around. Um, to your suggestion. If you're putting it in, put it in so that people actually can make use of it. Because they're not going to make use of it if you've asked them to go outside for an hour. They're just not going to. Um, the aunt, uh, Mr. Martucci, Councilman Martucci, I think the Board of Ed absolutely should have televised meetings. I'm amazed that they don't. But CAG is not like all the other groups either. Why should Board of Ed be done when not everybody else should? Because every single Ring Ringwood resident pays taxes and we all have a stake in the Board of Ed. So absolutely everybody should see Board of Ed meetings. We all have a stake in the Superfund site too because everybody in town lives in a Superfund town. They're not all Girl Scouts. They don't all have private um, businesses so that they're not all members of the Chamber of Commerce. They don't all have kids in sports, but every single resident in town lives in Ringwood, which has a Superfund site. So it's not the same as every other. And as Lisa said before, there is a precedent because we met here for 10 years. So just because one group gets it, it doesn't mean that everybody else is exactly the same and should be afforded the same opportunity. CAG is different, just like the Board of Ed is different. They're different. Um, it is a community. That's what that C stands for, community advisory group. So please come and join us, and let's try and fix this together, and let's try and move that general public portion so the public can actually make use of it. Thank you. Redo the name, Steve Michelin, 29, Wellback Terrace in beautiful Ringwood, New Jersey. Um, I want to go back to my first comments uh, about the vacation and sick time, and I know your response was that we are good compared to other towns. I don't feel that's a very good bar to compare to. It's a low bar, because in general, we hear, read in the paper, I just read in the paper about someone else retiring with a, a fat, big fat, you know, retirement golden package. I would just like you to consider when contract negotiations come up to say sick time is sick time. It's not meant something to be banked towards retirement. Uh, another point of, uh, that I'd like to bring up is when you do bank these things, you come on board as a, I'll call it a freshman employee, you have a day sick time. That gets banked until you retire and you're paid at a higher rate of pay. So, and again, if you have 30, 40 employees, even if it's a $15,000 limit, if we're talking about that could be, again, a liability of half a, million dollar, uh, half a million dollars, I could think of better uses for that money than to give someone a going away present when they retire with my tax dollars. Thank you. If I knew you were coming, I would have brought the limits. I don't know off the top of my head, there but, was, there, but there are limits in each of the contracts. If it helps, I did tell Mayor Spear and uh, Deputy Mayor Martucci that I was going to discuss this topic. Okay, well, I'm, I'm if sorry. If they I, wanted to share it with you, it was up to them. <laughs> okay, but what, what I'm suggesting is we do have limits in our contracts. And there is something to be said for, you know, if, 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 if you want to have, promote healthiness and you want to promote people to not use those sick time and use them as vacation time, that if you get 10 a year or whatever the case may be, there's some merit to making sure that, uh, that, that they're healthy and they have it if they have a catastrophic event and buying them out at uh, 10 cents on the dollar or whatever. Um, well, on the other, the argument on the other side is that someone is, is truly has a sick or cold, they're going to come into work because they know they're going to get reimbursed for it later on down the road. So I'm going to keep that money if I were in a government employee, I'd say, I'm going to keep that. This way I can retire with that bonus. I'm going to come in and be sick. 
We have we have not found that experience. Okay, so but I'm just saying it's it's possible. You know, Suburban Trends did an article a couple months ago on all the towns. Ringwood out of all the towns uh, had the least amount of exposure. Well, my point is, uh, Deputy Mayor Motucci, is why would you even want to put a dollar toward that? I'm not, I think the bar is too low when you're comparing yourself to other towns. In the corporate world, why could we not mirror the practice of a corporate world? I know there are contracts and negotiations. Okay. I'm just asking, <laughs> going forward, going forward, if you could sharpen the pencil. Thank you. And I know it'll vary by contract, but even if we were to sharpen the pencil, that's only people going forward, right? So if somebody came in under an older no, contract. No, contracts, the contracts changes. If, if you make a change like that, they don't grandfather the others. Oh, okay. It, de it depends on how you negotiate it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tall, 24 High Point Lane. Um, actually, Ms. Ms. Monahan made the point to have the CAG videoed and hear because all the things she talked about, the task report coming from our technical advisor is going to be discussed at the CAG. The uh, remedial design, the final remedial design for O'Connor and the other, uh, and um, capping of um, Peter's mine and the Cannon mine, that is on top. Uh, I think everyone should realize that um, during the years of the CAG, it was known to us that there was never going to be excavation of the sludge in the mines. It just wasn't going to happen. It would be like a reverse mining project. And it would be dangerous, and a lot of the people that live there wouldn't want it because it's scary. I mean, the last time there was a lot of uh, construction going on up there, the uh, Cooper mine opened up, which is still open, by the way. So all of those reports that she talked about, even the draft reports, they're talked about at the CAG meetings. People could hear what's going on, what are we discussing, what's going to happen, how long is it going to take, uh, when is the groundwater uh, rod coming out, and it's not going to be in time, as you said, the end of the fiscal cycle. It's going to be after that. So these are all huge issues, and yes, the Board of Ed should be televised. Absolutely. I can't believe you haven't done it yet. You could. You absolutely could do it. Not a problem. So uh, I really think you need to reconsider your stonewalling of moving the CAG here and videoing it because it is uh, the biggest issue facing the residents in Ringwood. And maybe the residents in Ringwood do not know that the aquifer at the Superfund site is contaminated, bottom line. It is been downgraded to a class two. That's something we got to think about. That's something we have to worry about. That's something that we have to take into consideration. And um, just listening to you equating the EPA Community Advisory Group to the Girl Scouts, Deputy Mayor. I didn't say Girl Scouts. Or not Girl Scouts, but other community groups, Chamber of Commerce or whatever. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I think that they're meeting at the library. I don't think it's a problem. But we fund the library to have meetings. So we fund the library, it's library, it's and we fund. We do fund Barrel Hall also. Okay, but not for, not for uh, community events. It's not a community event. It's an advisory group to educate the people that live in a Superfund community about what's going on. Okay? And, and you guys don't do it. And it can come down to the meeting and see it. Well, you're making it hard for the residents. That's unfortunate. Uh, oh, a question. You were talking about what happens with the sick days. If they don't use them, you talked about what? They buy them out or what happens? No, sick, day, sick days, you, you accumulate them, and then the contracts, there's a cap of how much they can get if, in fact, like a, maybe there's a $6,500 cap at the end of a, of a contract. It depends on which contract you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So if you have banked more than that, and that's the maximum that you can get. So there's people that have left with a couple hundred days that didn't take them. Mm -hmm. All they got in return for that was maybe $6,500. I'd have to look at each individual contract. So I see, out. but I thought there was something you said that if they wanted to buy them out, so that's what it was. If they d don't use them, they get... They add a cap of fifteen thousand dollars. 
No, there, there's a cap. There's a cap for sick days for in each contract, and it was the same yeah. cap that was in yeah. when you were in, in, in office. Yeah. Um, the contracts call for a cap of how much we will buy out of sick time if, in fact, they have more than than that dollar amount. They just lose those. So okay. They, that that you know. So so the guys like uh, I probably have a hundred. Uh, I, I don't know what anybody else has, but mm -hmm. um, but we track them and we have to allow for those sick days in in the uh, reporting to the state because it's an exposed liability. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Oops. Motion to close public portion. Second. Uh, roll call, please, on closing public. Sure. Council members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. And seeing I've gotten to the end of an agenda this year, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Mr. Bolton. Uh, roll call on adjournment. Yeah. Council members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Ferretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Can I? Yep. <laughs> 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 <laughs>